Or we're now coming to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Sias. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Present. Alderman Bosley. Present. Alderwoman Evans. Present. Alderman Page. Present. Alderwoman Gracia. Present. Alderman Coulter. Here. Alderwoman Rice. Present. Alderman Gunther. Here. Alderman Bauman. Present. Alderwoman Morton. Present. Alderman Stevens. Here. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Green. Present. Alderman Oldenburg. Present. Alderman Peel. Here. Alderman Todd. Present. Alderman Davis. Alderman Spencer. Here. Alderman Muhammad. Here. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Bacoro. Present. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderman Cone. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Alderman Boyd. Present. <coughs> President Reed. Here. Alderman Sias. Alderman Davis. Present. Alderman Cone. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Here. 26 present. Before I'm being present, again today is prayer. Given all honor to God, almighty God, source of all authority, we humbly ask guidance in our deliberations and wisdom in our conclusions. Amen. Amen. We will suspend with our regular order of business, take up our courtesy resolutions calendar, all of them from the first. All of them from the first, is she with us? No. Okay, all the one from the 19th, you recognize on the motion for our courtesy resolutions count. Uh, President Reed and members of the board, I move to adopt our courtesy resolution calendar for the, this session today. Moved by the one from the first. Second. Seconded by the one from the fourth. All the from the 21st, you recognize. All the from the 20, 21st. You're good. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, oh, oh. President, it is, it is not my resolution. Uh, okay. I thought it is you, I, my I colleague thought... from the 27th. Okay. So, so the 27, all the way from the 27th. Uh, Mr. President, on uh, behalf of the caucus, I'm asking that the alderman from the 21st present the resolution to his mother <laughs> because the Black caucus did do the resolution, but it is his mom and he needs to speak on that. Thank you, sir. There you go. So we're right back to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you, Chairwoman Boyd and members of the, the Automatic Black Caucus. It is my honor and privilege today as we honor Dr. Latanya Collins-Smith, who is the 21st president of Harris-Stowe State University and the first African-American woman to hold this position. This is exciting for me because I get to call her Latanya today. So Mr. President, I, I would please like to ask the clerk to read the resolution in its entirety. And Madam Clerk, can you please read the resolution? Resolution 194, honoring Dr. Latanya Collins-Smith. Whereas Dr. Latanya Collins-Smith is the 21st president 
of Harris Stowe State University. She is the first African-American woman to serve the university in this role. Colin Smith has more than 20 years of progressive leadership experience with an extensive background in administration and program development. Whereas she began her career in higher education at Harris Stowe State University in 2010 as a project coordinator in the Office of Counseling Services. She also served as the institution as provost and vice president of academic affairs, associate provost, assistant provost, and as executive director of the Center for the Career Engagement. Whereas Dr. Collins was the, was the co-principal investigator of the 5 million National Science Foundation grant to substantially strengthen STEM in the state of Missouri, the largest grant in the history of Harris Stowe. She currently serves as peer reviewer for the Higher Learning Commission, the, la the nation's largest regional accreditation body. And whereas she also served as campus leader for the following initiative, Melinda, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Reimagine First Year Project, the Strata Foundation Measuring College Value Project, the College, I'm sorry, the Complete College American MSI Initiative, the Ascendum Pro Project Successful Initiative, and the Gallup Alum Alumni Survey Project. And whereas Dr. Collins served as the chair of Dr. Martin Luther King's Statewide Celebration Commission of Missouri, the Board of Higher Education at Corsium Greater St. Louis. She served on both the Alumni Boards of Director and Alumni Foundation Board of the University of Central Missouri. She is the member of the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated the Gamma Omega chapter. And whereas Dr. Collins ha has received several leadership and service awards, including the Equal Education Opportunity Group Pi Pioneer Award, Resilience in Action Merchant of Hope Award, Deluxe Magazine 100 in Education Award, the 2022 NAACP Frankie Muse Freeman Norman A. Say Commitment to St. Louis Award, NAACP Excellence in Education Award, the NAACP Ben Hooks Community Leader Award, and the AKA Central Regional Outstanding Education Advancement Foundation Captain Award. She is the 2019 Millennium Leadership Initiative Pro Protege, a St. Louis Business Diversity Initiative Fellow in Higher Education Leadership Found Foundation Fellow and whereas a native of the historic Bill neighborhood in St. Louis, Missouri, Colin Smith is a, a proud graduate of St. Louis Public Schools. She earned an educational doctoral in higher education leadership from Maryville University in St. Louis, holds a master of social degree, a, a social work degree and a master of public health degree from St. Louis University. She is a graduate of University of Central Missouri where she majored and social work. Now, therefore, let it be resolved by this honorable board of, board of aldermen of the city of St. Louis that we pause in our deliberation during Women's History Month to recognize the many achievements and accomplishments of Dr. Latanya Collins Smith, the first African American woman president of Harris Stowe State University. We further direct the clerk of this board to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and prepare a commemorative copy to the end that it may be presented to her at a time and place deemed appropriate by the sponsor. Introduce this fourth day of March, 2022 by the Honorable Pamela Boyd, 27th Ward and the following honorable alder persons, Johns Collins Muhammad, 21st Ward, Sharon Tyus, 1st Ward, Bill Stevens, 12th Ward, Marlene Davis, 19th Ward, Shameen Clark Hubbard, 26th Ward, Lisa Middlebrook, 2nd Ward, Tina Peel, 17th Ward, and James Page, 5th Ward. Alderman from the 21st. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, we are honoring Dr. Latoya Collins Smith, who again is the president of Harristo State University, an institution that has served the city of St. Louis since 1857 the only institution in our city that gives second chances and third chances to high school students looking 
to get their college degree and looking for economic and quality education. With that, Mr. President, I will leave it to my fellow colleagues. All right, excellent. Uh, all the one from the 27th, we'll go back to you since you were the primary sponsor on that, and then we'll yeah, take it, open it up. Uh, yes, Mr. President, thank you, uh, Audrey Muhammad. It was funny to have you speak, and you did your mom proud today because she, she was listening. I know, Tanya, how she is, so thank you very much for speaking so eloquently in regards to her as a leader in our community, and especially as a Black woman in our city. And so uh, I turn it back over to uh, you, Mr. President. All right. Uh, I'll ask everyone, if you're not speaking, please keep your uh, microphones on, on mute if you haven't been recognized. Uh, Alderman from the 23rd. Uh, uh, two quick things. One, uh, I consider John my brother, so I, I assume you must be my adopted mother. Um, <laughs> you, you raised them well. Uh, but, but my other thing, uh, uh, and I thought my name was on this, but I still think uh, I'd like to make a motion we do it in bank. Second. Been moved by the Alderman from 23rd, seconded by the Alderman from the 14th that we make resolution number 194 in bank. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I was done. That was all. Just... Anyway, did a good job with John, and you must be my adopted mother because John is my brother. All right. All the from the 14th. Yes, I was going to ask my name be added, but I would also like to recognize Ms. Co uh, Dr. Collins. Uh, Dr. Collins, as uh, her son John knows, was an alumni of Cleveland Junior Naval Academy when I was serving there as a teacher. Oh, and uh, wow. he's come a long way. I don't remember how many years ago that's been. And I won't, and I won't reveal that because, <laughs> you know, after I taught there for 25 years, she was probably one of the early students. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, other people remember her from Cleveland ROTC. And it just shows that the St. Louis Public Schools do, yeah. does turn out good students and they, they are very successful. And I want to congratulate her and commend her on her success. And, and I would like to also recognize that um, John has, has done her proud, but that other, that other guy from the 23rd, I don't know what happened to him. So, <laughs> but anyway, congratulations, so, so. Dr. Colin Smith, and more success as president of my uh, college. I appreciate your work and, and the job you've done. Uh, so far, and you will continue. Thank you so much for your service and uh, for the achievements you've 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 attained. Thank you again, and and more success to come. All right, thank you, all the one from the twenty second. Yes, good morning, Mr. President, members of the board. Thank you for this opportunity, um, Dr. Collins Smith. Uh, congratulations. Um, thank you for being a trendsetter. Um, you are inspiring, I'm sure, a lot of young women. Um, wow, you look so young. Uh, I'm just amazed. And you're just sparkling this morning. You look fabulous this morning. Um, maybe at some point you can um, get with some of the members of the Board of Aldermen and teach us how to manage John a little bit better, Alderman Collins Muhammad. You know, we're really trying to really work with him as hard as we can. So if you can give us any inspiration and guidance on how to effectively communicate with him, we would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and congratulations again. A point of order. Please take your point of order. <laughs> point of order, not well taken. Uh, all the all from the fourth. Uh, I had ahead. removed my hand, but since you called on me, I'm going. I would li also like to congratulate her. Uh, uh, as I can say, I am an alumni from Harris when it was called Harris Teachers College, but I won't go back that far to say what that was, uh, when that was. Uh, so I would just like to congratulate her for her services and uh, 
this acknowledgement is well deserved. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Any further discussion? All of them from twenty third. Still, uh, all of them from twenty second. All along from the night. <laughs> Hold on for a second. Let me back up. Let's go to all of them from the nineteenth, and all of them from the twenty third. All of them from twenty second. If you want to speak again, put your hand back up. All of them from the nineteenth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and members of the board. Uh, first, let me say congratulations to you, Dr. Collins uh, Smith. You know that. Uh, I am a great, great supporter and one of your greatest cheerleaders for the university. And even before it became a part of the 19th Ward, I'm always on campus, always willing to support. And I tell you, I've learned a lot from you. I don't know if you even remember, uh, you had me participate in one of those higher learning, uh, I guess it's a state audit type thing where you show all your academic uh, uh, structure for uh, them to evaluate from people all over the state. And you had that so well organized. And I was so proud to hear what I heard about what is going on in its totality with the university. And you are truly, truly well deserving of this position. And I know that you will do us well. And I'm very, very, very happy for you. And I'm wishing you much, much success. I'm asking in this region to get behind you in your leadership and support the university and make sure that you have all the resources that you need in order to provide the best education experience possible for the students there. And most especially the opportunity for those who teach to have the resources they need to do even a better job than they're already doing. Again, congratulations to you. Thank you. Alderman from the third, uh, his hand just went down. No, it's um, okay. Uh, thank, I, just, I just wanted to say thank you for your service. Really appreciate, um, you know, all the great things that you're doing. I think it's very important, especially with this being Women's Month, uh, to recognize the great things that our women are doing. There would be no us if it was not for uh, you all. You all have been the backbone for our community for a lot of years. And when it comes down to us, um, you know, being unfortunately just being truthful being uh, kind of educational pioneers of our culture right now you are leading you are the ones that are teaching our communities when a lot of us get locked up so i appreciate you and i appreciate your service and everything you are bringing to the table and inspiring our young people um to become and you know follow a path that you've already helped pave the way so um so i appreciate you um thank you very much for your service um anything in any way uh, i can be of assistance even you know, right here in the third or, you know, as it turns into a different district, anything, please don't hesitate to ask. This is a time where we got funding for stuff. So I always want to throw that out there because we have never been able to just say that loosely. Mm -hmm. We talk about education and education is everything when it comes down to us building our city up and you are in a very powerful position. So any way we can, you know, once again, help move that agenda along and help you be more powerful in your position, you know, just reach out. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. The one from the 26th for the first time. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Good morning, Queen. I will echo everything that everyone has said, and I would have been remiss if I didn't just chime in and offer again my congratulations. I support 100%. You already know I have been on 1000 since Monday, since the announcement came out. And the reality is because like Alderman Boyd said, women like me uh, out here on in the community are watching and have been watching women like you. And it's inspiring. And it's beautiful to see, especially because, you know, myself and my husband, how we've been watching the work for years and watching you steady, 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 put in the commitment and put in the service to that, um, to not just Harrisville, but all, all over our communities, the way you touch and your reach is amazing. So your glow is amazing this morning and you deserve every bit of it. Keep smiling and keep serving, knowing that once again, you have clearly all of our 100% support. Uh, now I think the alderman from the 22nd, you had your hand back up. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, uh, I just didn't want to um, 
forget to do so. We have a lot of great resolutions. Can you add me to 190, 191, 193, 195, and 198? Uh, Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Thank you. All right. Um, Follow on from the 19th. You had your hand up. You took it. Are you good? Uh, and then all the women from the 26, your hand is still up. Are you good? Uh, back to the, all the women from the 27th. But before we go back to there, I just want to say, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Colin Smith, um, and a little bit of lost words because of how much I just respect and admire you. Uh, you have done some great things in the world of education. Um, the works that you've done in raising your kids, you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. And you've just done such a tremendous job. You know, I've known John since you know, years and years ago and uh, see him grow and then uh, serve at the Board of Alderman has just been a, a pleasure for me and others. Uh, and to see your daughter serve uh, in the state capitol. Congratulations on job well done. And then for you, <laughs> you know, breaking new trends at Harris Stowe, uh, wow, wow. You have truly uh, already left a mark on the city of St. Louis that's unparalleled. So I just want to congratulate and thank you so much. As you know, this resolution is the highest honor the board has given the organization and individual. Right. And a lot of times as African-Americans, we've seen our history be rewritten or totally written out of history. So this act is one that's really important in terms of assuring that a person's contributions and history is firmly documented and cemented in the records of the city of St. Louis. And that's what we're doing here today for you. So 100, 200 years from now, uh, you will be able to go back and research and see that history and read about uh, Dr. Colin Smith and the work that she's done and uh, the legacy that she brought to the city of St. Louis. So congratulations on a job well done. Uh, all the women from the 27th, would you like to introduce Dr. Colin Smith or all the women from the 19th turn of one of you all? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from the caucus <laughs> introduced the doctor for us. I am, I, I am honored and I am privileged to introduce to some that don't know her and let other people be aware of Dr. Latanya Collin Smith, the first African American woman to be the president of Harris Stowe College. University, I stand corrected, university, yeah. not college, university. <laughs> and so I think people don't, it, and St. Louis is so small, and I say this all the time, it's a dot connector. And all you got to do is look around and connect the dots. And so uh, Dr. Uh, Latanya has went to school with a lot of people within our community, and they've grown up together. And it's so interesting because from elementary to college, she has touched people's lives. So at this time, to the Board of Aldermen, I would like to introduce to you all, Dr. Latanya Collins-Smith. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much. I am, I am truly humbled and honored to be with you this morning and to um, receive this resolution. You know, oftentimes um, I have seen these resolutions given throughout the city and, and to other individuals. And so today I get my own resolution. <laughs> Never thought I would, but it is, a, it is truly an honor um, to be a, a recipient recipient of this resolution. As um, the clerk was reading, I was like, wow, I did all that? And so uh, that is just a testament of, of who I am as a person. And as I share with my team here, and as I stated on Monday, this is so not about me. This is about how I could be used in service in order to help young people and anyone who is interested in um, going on and receiving a college education. Harris Stowe is a, is a beacon of light and it is a gem, truly a gem here in our, in our city. And it is really one um, that we can really brag about because we have the lowest tuition 
in the state of Missouri. And not mm -hmm. only that, we are an institution of second chances. Oftentimes, you know, people say, well, Harris Stowe has, look at the graduation rates. Well, the part that people don't understand about Harris Stowe is this, we're an institution of second chances and oftentimes individuals transfer to us in their second year. Mm -hmm. The way that the, um, the federal guidelines are designed, we don't get to count them in our graduation rate. And it doesn't mean that they don't go on to be successful individuals. You know, this is full circle for me uh, for a number of reasons. As a proud um, resident, lifelong resident of the city of St. Louis, um, and also as a proud product of St. Louis Public Schools, many of my educators were, as, as you heard from um, Alderwoman Howard, who I affectionately know as Miss Howard, who was my art teacher in high school, um, Many of my educators were Harris or Stowe teachers, alums, teacher college alums. And so this is an opportunity for me to also give back to them everything that they have sown into me. And so this is truly, truly, truly an honor. I thank every member of the Black Caucus for this recognition. Um, I also want to let you know, Miss Marlene, I will be, Alderwoman Davis, I will be reaching out to you because that time has come again. And so I'll be reaching out to you uh, as a representative from the community to share with our accrediting body the great work that, that we're doing here. And Alderwoman um, Boy, thank you so much. I officially call her Mama Boy because her daughter and I, her daughter was my mentor in undergraduate school, and we're still very good friends to this day. And um, Shameen, just everybody. And last, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge um, my son, John Collins Muhammad, and um, uh, Alderman Boyd, I will share with you offline because as I know that this is being recorded, I will share with you offline how you can get John together. Yeah. Uh, so thank you all so much. I truly appreciate this. And I really, really look forward to working with all of you. It's going to take all of us um, as we look at the crime and everything that is happening in our community. Yes. Um, I am near and dear to this community is near and dear to my heart. Um, I am so St. Louis and um I look forward to being able to share with you all some of the initiatives that will be launched out of Harris Stowe as a way for us to be able to help um, reduce some of the crime and also um, be able to put some of our individuals here in our community to work. So there will be some great things coming out of Harris Stowe in the next couple of months. And I'm going to need all of your support um, on this call and down at the Board of Aldermen in order to make sure that we make St. Louis a greater place. So thank you all so much. And I won't belabor because I can talk all day and all, all day long <laughs> about the great things at Harris Stowe. But I look forward to working with each of you. So thank you all so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Colin Smith. We appreciate you and I'll be uh, honored if your son delivers your resolution to you personally. So thank <laughs> you so the, much. <laughs> all the men from the 21st. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. I just wanna thank Chairwoman Boyd and the members of the Black Caucus again. They definitely did a good job in keeping this from me because I had no clue until yesterday right around four o'clock uh, p.m. So thank you again for recognizing my mom. It would, it would be remiss, Mr. President, if we, as we talk about the greatness of Harris Stowe, it would be remiss if we did not recognize uh, uh, the legendary Dr. Henry R. Givens and Dr. Dwayne J. Warmack for their innovative leadership of Harris Stowe State University. And, and thank you to the Board of Regents, uh, chaired by the son of the Ottoman for the 19th Ward, Mr. Michael McMillan, who chairs uh, the Board of Regents for Harris Stowe State University and also a former member of our August body. Uh, I would like to thank them for, for, for their nomination and their selection of a very fitting leader, my mom, who I know is going to do a fantastic job. And I cannot wait to see all the things that Harris Stowe does. But thank you so much to the Black Caucus. I love you. Thank you. Very much. <laughs>
Hello. Alderman from the fifth. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I cannot let this moment escape <laughs> without offering <laughs> congratulations to Dr. Colin Smith, a proud resident of the fabulous Fifth Ward. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Colin Smith, for so much, uh, for taking so much time here this morning and all that you've already done. You have a, think about it, you've already created a legacy and you're, just, and you're only midstream in the race. I mean, think about that. that, that that's amazing. So continue to do what you're doing. Uh, and like everyone here said, man, you're so young to accomplish so much already. <laughs> Thank you and have a great day. Now, um, I think we had a resolution by, Carol, uh, all the one from the 14th. Yes, um, at this time, I'd like to put before the Board of Aldermen a resolution number 190, recognition of March is Bleeding Disorders and Awareness Month. And I have as my guest this morning, Bridget Tyree. I believe she's on the call. Um, right. you. Would you like the clerk to read the resolution? Yes, I would. I would like the clerk to read the resolution. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read, please read resolution 190. Resolution 190. Recognizing recognition of March as Bleeding Disorder Awareness Month. Whereas this honorable board of aldermen of the city of St. Louis has been apprised that March 2022 will be recognized as Bleeding Disorder Awareness Month. And whereas this, des this designation will formalize and expand upon the designation 36 years ago of March 1986 as Hemophilia Awareness Month by President Ronald Reagan. And whereas the Federal Department of Health and Human Services designated March 2016 as National Bleeding Disorder Month. And whereas multiple states and local governments since nine, I'm sorry, since 2016 have passed a proclamation and or resolutions declaring March as Bleeding Disorder Awareness Month. And whereas bleeding disorder advocates during this month, wear a red material around your neck. And whereas these bleeding disorders, which share the in inability to form a proper blood clot are characterized by extending bleeding after injury, surgery, tra trauma, or menstruation, and can lead to significant morbidity and also, and, and can be fatal if not treated effectively. Whereas many individuals with hemophilia became affected with HIV and hepatitis C in 1980s due to the contamination of blood supply and blood products. And whereas this Awareness Month in the city of St. Louis, Missouri will generate great awareness and understanding of not only hemophilia, but all inheritable bleeding disorders, including bond will brand disease, which alone impacts an estimated 1% of the U.S. population or more than 3.2 million individuals. And whereas this Awareness Month will foster a greater sense of community and shared purpose among individuals with all inheritable bleeding disorders. And whereas this Awareness Month will elevate awareness of, of and engagement in the in, inheritable bleeding disorders journey beyond our community to the general public, enabling the prevention of illness, unnecessary procedures, and disability. Now, therefore, let it be resolved by the Board of Aldermen of the City of St. Louis that we pause in our deliberations to recognize March 2022 as Bleeding Disorder Awareness Month in the City of St. Louis, Missouri, and thank all who have worked to cure, prevent, and make the public awareness of this illness. We further direct the clerk of the Board of Aldermen to spread a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and to prepare a commemorative copy to the end that it may be presented to our honoree at a time and place deemed appropriate by the sponsor. Introduced this fourth day of March, 2022 by the Honorable Carol Howard, 14th Ward Alderwoman, Sharon Tyus, 1st Ward, Bill Stevens, 12th Ward, 
Jeffrey Boyd, 27, I'm sorry, 22nd Ward, and Shemaine Clark Hubbard, 26th Ward. Other one from the 14th. I would like to um, recognize uh, Ms. Bridget Tyree who, from the uh, Hemophilia Foundation located in my ward. Uh, at this time, Bridget, if you'd like to speak to the body. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. A special thank you to Alderwoman Carol Howard for having me as her guest. Um, so I'm Bridget Tyree. I'm the executive director of Gateway Hemophilia Association. We've been serving people with bleeding disorder since 1969. We cover Eastern Missouri and Southern Illinois. We're the only nonprofit serving people with bleeding disorders in the St. Louis area. So March, as um, you heard, is Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month. It's a time to spread awareness about bleeding disorders such as hemophilia. Uh, my father had hemophilia. I'm a carrier. My son has hemophilia. I've never known life without hemophilia. Um, it's an inheritable bleeding disorder where the blood does not clot properly. Um, it can lead to spontaneous bleeding as um, like following injuries, surgeries, and there's no cure for hemophilia and treatment can be very costly. So all week, members of our community, we've been meeting with our federal elected officials uh, via Zoom that are located in Washington, D.C. And then next week we plan to, we have appointments with our state representatives. So we're currently working on an accumulator adjuster bill, which allows copay assistance to count towards a patient's deductible. There's more information on that on our website. And I just want to say the work that our elected officials do are extremely important. So I want to thank all of you for all the hard work that you do in the city of San Louis. And behind me, we hang our proclamation very proudly for St. Louis. So thank you for. I thank you. Alderman from the 12th. Hold on for a second, uh, Bridget. Uh, hold on for a second. Don't log off. Don't, yeah. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alderman from the 12th. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, move that we make this uh, Curtis resolution in bank. It's been second. Moved by Alderman from the 12th. Uh, who seconded that? I missed that. I uh, oh, second. Eight. Uh, I'll second about all the ones from the 27th. All in favor, uh -huh. see the 19th. The 19th. Uh, all right. He's second. Second about all the ones from the 19th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. I uh, create another copy of Resolution 190 in Bank. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Well, Bridget, I want to just continue to thank you. Um, and you, you come before us every year and, um, you know, continue to do good work uh, within our community. I don't know if everyone knows your story. I know we've heard it in the past. And if you wouldn't mind, if you'll, could you please tell people how you got involved and why and, and just give them a little bit of that background information, I think it'd be good. Of course, President. Um, we So my father had hemophilia and we lived in a, DeSoto, Missouri. So about 40 minutes south of St. Louis and he would come to St. Louis University to get his treatment um, back in the 80s. A, they did not heat treat medication and the blood supply. So he contracted HIV AIDS. And so um, it was the hemophilia community that kept seeing this in the blood supply and kept raising their hand saying, um, there's something in our nation's blood supply. We're losing husbands. We're losing sons. We're losing children. And um, it was uh, definitely a pandemic. And so he died in 1986. He lived about 18 months with AIDS. And so I was 10 years old. My father was 33, left a, left a wife with two daughters. And, and she moved us to the big city of St. Louis because um, they were more acceptable and more understanding and uh, more opportunities for us. So Fast forward, I have a son now. He just turned 27 a couple, um, two days ago. And I do what I do because I don't want what happened to my father in that generation to happen uh, for our future generation. So the National Hemophilia Foundation, we have somebody that sits on the nation's blood supply, um, the CDC, so they watch. 
they they're they are looking at prevention. So when people say, "How does hemophilia affect me?" Uh, it definitely through the CDC, we we advocate for funding and maintaining funding for prevention and disease awareness. So. Um, please stop by my office or call me gateway hemophilia. You can Google us. We're in Eichelberger one block off of Kings highway. We have a huge walk on, um, in July on a Sunday and we gather our families to come and, and just, um, spread awareness. And so we can continue offering education and, um, we offer medical alert bracelets, financial assistance, scholarships. So we are, like I said, the only nonprofit of our kind and, we're here and we will continue to be here. We've been here for 52 years now. All right. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for all of your work and thank you for the story. I think it means so much when you share that every year with us. Thank you. Thank you for all the work that you do. All right. Thank you. And your son's 27 now. Can you Travel believe it? <laughs> really goes fast. Man, I'm getting gray hair and you still, man, you're looking still as young as you were when I first saw you. But congratulations. You're so sweet. Thank you all. all right. Thank all you for, for keeping our blood supply safe for everyone because the work you do is important, not only for people with, with bleeding disorders, it's important for those of us that may at some point need a blood transfusion because it's very important. Uh, yeah, yeah. For sure. thanks Thank again. You. Have a good day. Um, all, the, all the one from the 27th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I wanted to recognize uh, Dr. Marty Casey and a lot of people are familiar with that name. And so I'm asking the clerk, would she please read that resolution for us? Madam Clerk, could you please read resolution uh, 193? Resolution 193, honoring Dr. Marty K. Casey. Whereas Dr. Marty K. Casey, performance artist and activist has procreated and giving meaning to a new word, archivist. Whereas leveraging the arts of healing, Dr. Casey founded Ungun Institution, focused on healing trauma through applied arts. And whereas Dr. Casey has found a way to connect and communicate through the arts, in 2020, she performed on stage in the Big Apple for the AARP Association to a sold out crowd just days before the global pandemic forced a lockdown. And whereas while the pan pandemic slowed us all down, Dr. Casey still found ways to push her agenda for activism and communi community healing. And as such, her efforts gained recognition by the St. Louis Business, Business Journal, featuring her on the cover as one of the 25 most influential businesswomen in St. Louis. And whereas Dr. Casey's community and philanthropy efforts over the past 10 years have yielded numerous awards and accolades. However, the greatest award of them all is realizing the positive impact, impact that her commitment to engaging, connecting, and communicating with the community. And whereas Dr. Casey actively serves on three boards, Hope Creates, Gateway to Dreams and Purpose Earth, all align with her mission to heal communities through the empowerment of recovery through expressive art. In 2021, Marty K. Casey received the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award signed by President Joseph R. Biden. And therefore, let it be resolved by the Board of Aldermen of the City of St. Louis that we pause in our deliberations during Women's History Month to recognize the many accomplishments and achievements of Dr. Mary K. Casey. We further direct the clerk of this board to spread the, a copy of this resolution across the minutes of these proceedings and prepare a commemorative copy to the end that it may be presented at, a, at her at a time and place deemed appropriate by the sponsor. Introduced this fourth day of March, 2022 by the Honorable Pamela Boyd, 27th Ward Alderwoman, Sharon Tyus, 1st Ward, Bill Stevens, 12th Ward, Jeffrey Boyd, 22nd Ward, and Shemaine Floyd Clover, 26th Ward. <laughs> All the one from the 27th. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I was uh, 
in February, I was thinking of women who I could have represent us in March. So it started in from January to February. I have been thinking about it. And so these ladies have were notified back in February to say, we want to look at recognizing you and the work that you're doing. And so the history of, of I say of socialism, women are always ex, um, not, not recognized, but just excluded. You know, we do the work. And I call us the worker bees. We we do the work. And so a lot of times, no offense to the men, but you all stand up with your chest oh, out <laughs> with your suspenders on. And you say, yeah, this is what we did. But the women are the one that's doing the work. Mm -hmm. So I'm honored to recognize Dr. Marty K. Casey in her work because she has been that quiet a uh, piece of tornado that's coming through our city and you all better take heed because she's coming and she's going to be a whirlwind <laughs> so at this time i want to recognize her for women's uh history month thank you uh, dr casey can, i mean uh marty can casey can you hold one second i'm gonna Ooh. grab a couple of them and we'll come to you in a minute all of them from the 19th Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. You know, uh, Alderwoman Boy says she's coming. No, she's here. Uh, we go back a bit, and I appreciate her. Uh, she's a dynamo. And uh, I wanted to add my name to the resolution, please. Thank Mom, you. Uh, would you like to move that it be done in bank, Alderwoman, from the 19th? I shall move that it, it's put in banks. Thank you. Moved by all the one from the 19th, second about all the one from the 26th, and I think it was all the one from the 14th that we make uh, resolution 193 in bank. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. All the one from the 26th. Thank you. This I don't know how we're gonna make it through the meeting. It's so much excitement and so much congratulations. Yeah. So <laughs> All the women, Davis. I know Eric and I are in the office trying to hold back our tears. Listen, me and so Dr. <laughs> Casey, you know, sis, we have shared so many amazing spaces. Um, and I've seen your work and I feel your work. What I will say is every time you're around, there is absolutely a sweet spirit around, even when you don't speak. So when you speak, and I've heard you talk about the power of the tongue. That is absolutely your superpower. It says, thank you. Please keep up the work. The Ungun, if anyone is not familiar with Ungun, do yourself a favor today and look up Ungun. Get involved with that. Get involved with all of her work that she's doing. There are some amazing women uh, that are out here, like all the women boys said, been on the ground, been doing the work, and they that we could never recognize them enough. But today is a, is a good start, a good time for us too. So thank you for all your work, uh, Dr. Casey. And like we, tell, like we told uh, Dr. Kyle Smith earlier, it, obviously you have all of our support. Yep. All the from the third. Uh, thank you. Dr. Casey, I just wanted to say, ooh, one second. Uh, we, Can you come up to me real quick? Yeah, we, we still don't see your video. Hey, uh, Can you Alderman come back from, to me? I'm sorry. Alderman from the 3rd, we'll come back to you. Alderman from the 12th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Casey, I just want to say your work is of vital importance, and I hope there is not a single day that you wake up and you question, am I making an impact? Because you are doing one of the most noble things and one of the most intangible things that someone can do, you are encouraging the heart and the spirit. You will always have an advocate for the arts uh, in, in the 12th Ward. And I just want to point out your performance uh, in March 2020. How many people, how many people looked back on that performance as everything rolled in and the world completely changed and said, well, at least I had that. At least I got to experience Miss Marty Casey before everything changed. And really, I do hope that you wake up every morning and know that you are so vital to St. Louis. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, I yield back. Uh, All right. from the third, are you back with us? 
Give me one more second. All the way from the third, are you back with us? It, all right. He, he lost his video. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Well, Dr. Casey, I just want to add my just deepest thanks and congratulations on all that you've done. Um, oftentimes, we don't look at the treasures that are so close to us, right? And you're making a mark on this nation from the city of St. Louis. And you call St. Louis home and you're reaching out and being able to touch people in a different way with your messaging where it's taking root in people and causing people to change what they're doing and to better their lives and the lives of everyone around them. Uh, that's tremendous. And I, you know, I have to say, you know, coming from a spiritual background, um, grandson of a Baptist minister, I have to tell you, uh, that's a gift that God has placed in you, right? That is a gift that he has given you. So thank you for using that gift. And, uh, you know, I was raised to believe that sometimes another person's blessings can, another person's calling can be your blessing. So your calling has been a blessing to me and others all across the city of St. Louis. So I'm just so honored to join with the rest of the board today in unification to congratulate you on the works that you've done to transform the lives of the people around us. Uh, this resolution, as you heard earlier, is the highest honor the board has to give any organization or individual, and it is an official act of the board to submit in time some of your many contributions up until this point. So when people come back and see how the role that St. Louis has played in transforming its community and transforming the lives of people across this country, they will read the story of Dr. Marty Casey and know that you passed this way and you contributed so much so that on this day, we pause to recognize you. Let's give her a huge round of applause. And I see Alderman from the third is back with us and then we'll come, then we'll give you an opportunity. Alderman from the third. I'm sorry, my, my phone is doing some funky stuff today. It's like off and on, it's overheating. That's it's all right. right. I'm That's sorry right. about that. Um, to, uh, Dr. Casey, I really appreciate you. I actually have, have watched uh, one of your plays before. I don't know if you remember, but the, um, the first resolution I, I believe I ever publicly gave out was at one of her plays um, where um, I think you were playing multiple characters uh, in that play. And... Uh, I don't remember the premise, but it was a, I'm sorry, it was a really, really good play. That was the first time I'd actually uh, given out a resolution. And since then I've learned uh, a lot about you and I've seen you in multiple movements that we've had going on throughout the city. So um, just for the folks that are out there, uh, Dr. Casey is very involved in community and, and stepping up for the, uh, the rights um, for all individuals, not just uh, problems that um, are uh, uh, germane to, to black uh, issues, African-Americans, but she fights for so many different issues. So, and I appreciate all the effort that you put into uh, trying to better the human race uh, in general. We saw the effort that you put into also trying to uh, cultivate the community that, that you know for sure, for sure needs that cultivation, especially from a woman's perspective and that nurturing nature. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, the, the things that you have done for our communities and uh, the, all the great things that you will do in the future. My goodness. Um, first of all, I have to uh, give honor to God. And I want to say thank you for allowing me to be here. And thank you to the Black Caucus, to all those who have signed on and um, endorsed. And a special thank you to Alderwoman Pamela Boyd. Um, I, I wish that I had a lot of time to really share as much as I would like to share, but I do want to keep it brief. Um, first of all, let me tell you what Ungun is. Ungun is a transformational process that helps clients to elevate emotionally from stuck and hurt pain that's caused by trauma. I became an activist because acting and music was the one area that helped to save my life. Understanding that the arts helped me to unlock childhood trauma, generational trauma, I knew that if I could bottle it up somehow and offer it to others that I could help them to heal as well. 
what Ungun is doing is not has just been done on um, a national level, but it's being recognized on a global level. But today is one of the most important days of my life because I didn't understand how God would allow me to become known with this process globally and nationally by our president. But I had never come before my people in my own backyard. And I know that we needed the healing the most. So I want you to know that right now I'm fighting back the tears because I've been waiting on this moment. I am a woman of service. I call myself an entertainer because I understand that what's inside of me comes out and that's what I have to offer to give. Hurt people hurt people, healed people heal people. I had to get to a place of healing so that I would have a greater offer. I am here, St. Louis, born in raised. I could have moved a long time ago to LA and New York and Chicago, Atlanta and everywhere else. Everyone decides to move to go to be great. But mm -hmm. I know that the gifts that God gives us wherever we are, those gifts are great. Those gifts can go forth and those gifts can make a difference. And I want to make a difference in my own city. If you don't call on me to be used, how can I show up to be used? This is St. Louis, the show me state. Show me that you need me. Show me that you love me me, show me that what I have means something to you. And I will show you that everything that I have, I freely give to you. I thank you for today. Blessings to all continue to do the great work. And just so you know, President Reed, you and I was in a movie together. If you remember the first movie, yeah. <laughs> we was in that movie together. And yeah. as an activist is what I am. It's a word that I've coined, activist. I'm an activist. I'm an actress first, and I'm an activist second. And I chose to become an actress because that's where my healing lie. But activism chose me after the unrest of Ferguson. And so with that being said, when you put it all together, we have the medicine, y'all, the natural medicine to heal our city. Every show that you will see me in, I'm in a few movies coming up, The Mink Slide, Alton, Broken Strings. And, and all of those pieces, these are pieces that will help to hold our stories of the past and bridge us a better future. I don't put my name to anything that, that does not give us a, a better outcome. So I thank you for today. I really do. Blessings to each and every last one of you. And Marlene Davis, oh my goodness, all the women. Yes, we go way, way back when I was the one of the first women to even have a show at the Fox Theater as the writer, director, and producer, name on the marquee. When my great-grandmother in this city, born in 1910, she was a oh. Black woman, did not even could not even go into those doors. And when I had that show at the Fox, my great grandmother who died in 2003, I was able to roll her to the front of the stage. And when the, uh, the, the, um, the usher took her to her seat, the, the white usher said to her, oh my goodness, you have the best seats in the house. And my great grandmother says, well, I should, cause that's my great granddaughter's name out there on that marquee. Oh, yeah. And so we can change, we can change the, 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 the uh, trajectory of, of where we want to go in St. Louis. We are better together, black and white and everything in between. We can do this oh. together, but we have to do it in love. Thank you. Ooh, Blessings. Man, Lord Jesus. <laughs> If you all go ahead, Dr. K. And the church say amen. If you are, if you and drop that mic. Oh, yeah, exactly. If you are not inspired after that, I don't know what will inspire you. Oh Lord. Dr. I got Holy Ghost awesome. do that going up and down my own. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Wow. Wow. I, there's nothing I can say but wow. Uh, I have mm -hmm. to. Turn it back over to the all the women from the 27th uh, who brought us here so that she can um, usher you out. All the women from the 27th? Uh, I don't know how to follow that act, so I'm just letting <laughs> you know. That's not, <laughs> that's a hard act to follow. But thank you again, Dr. Casey. I am honored that you are representing the women of St. Louis. And uh, of course, we know Alder Woman Davis has already been in tune, so we know how she works, correct? So we know that we will see more of you and you will be out there to help our families within our communities. Thank you again.
Everybody record that, show it to everybody. That's St. Louis. That's Dr. Marty Casey so much. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And uh, I don't know what to say except for keep doing it. Just keep doing it, doing, doing your thing all over the country. And thank you for continuing to call St. Louis home. Have a great day, Dr. Casey. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt our courtesy resolutions calendar. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Motion carries. With that, we'll return to our regular order of business. And before we do introduction to our guests, I'm going to ask everyone to please join me in a moment of silence. Um, for the loss of Comptroller Green's mother, um, uh, Miss Maureen Williams, uh, who passed away. And that's where all the one from the first is, is representing the board this morning at her funeral services. So please join me in a moment of silence uh, for uh, Comptroller Green's mother, Dr. Maureen Williams. Thank you. Introduction of honor guests. Any introduction of honor guests? Alderman from the 23rd. As always, I would like to have my good friend Greg Meyer as my honored guest. Welcome, Greg. Alderman from the 26th. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I have two honored guests this morning. First, I have an honored guest that many of us know and love, Miss Linda Robinson. And why I'm shouting her out today is because I follow her. I follow her excellence and everything she does. I want to wish her luck and God's speed and wherever God is taking her. But I also want her to know that because I follow her, I knew that today was Wear Blue Day for Colorectal Cancer Awareness. So I wanted to shout out Linda Robinson. And <laughs> I wore my blue today for you, sis, and Godspeed. And then the, the next one, again, talking about this emotional roller coaster that we've been on this morning, I would like to um, have as my honor guest um, my sister Leslie Bird, a former 26th Ward um, resident that I still claim, and she knows that, but um, she, she worked at Better Family Life for years. And now she's um, under the amazing leadership of Mike McMillan and the Urban League and the Save Our Sons uh, program daily out in the community. And unfortunately, one of the horrifying things about the city of St. Louis um, on Wednesday, she, she works every day to save our sons, but on Wednesday, we couldn't save her son. And so I would ask that we um, pause and have a moment of silence for Jaden Bird and wrap our hands, our arms, our resources, our love and prayers around Leslie Bird, her entire family, uh, her, her work family, the Urban League family, and anybody attached to uh, the, the countless people that are attached and have, re, um, have reacted, reacted to the loss of the amazing student, the amazing young man that Jaden Bird was. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. I'll ask everyone to join us in a moment of silence. All the one from the 26th, thank you so much for that recognition for the family. Um, and then I also want to thank you for recognizing Linda Robinson for all that she does. A, a lot of you have probably seen Linda at, at events and stuff. She's a volunteer that uh, volunteers at nearly every event that you're at. You'll see her somewhere there volunteering, doing everything just to help, just an amazing person. You follow her social media feeds, all positive, all pushing positive for people. She, uh, and just trying to spread, spread love. She's just an amazing person. So thank you so much for that. Um, all the women from the 14th. I, I, never mind because I forgot to put my hand down. I was wanting to be added to another. Yeah, okay. Never, okay, thank you. All the women so, from the 21st. Thank you, Mr. President. As my honored guest, I would like to have Mr. Saeed Amir. He is the Vice President of Government Relations at the Metropolitan Sewer District. Mr. Brian Rogers, the Vice President of the International Association of Plumbing and Mechanical Officials. 
in my good friend, our former clerk, Mr. David Sweeney, uh, as my special guest, uh, and also to my colleague from the 26th. Thank you for recognizing your former resident, uh, Ms. Leslie Bird. She does stay in the O'Fallon Park neighborhood now. So we share her, but I tell you, she lets me know that she is West Side forever. So <laughs> thank you for recognizing her. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. All right, thank you. Oh, I'm from the 27th. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I want to recognize our uh, honored guests as the women of our secretaries uh, for the Board of Aldermen for uh, Women's Month. So I want to congratulate them for hanging in there with us and being strong. Right. Also, all the women on the Board of Aldermen. Second. <laughs> I was a smart one, Alderman from third. The rest of them, Alderman Page, you know, everybody else slept through that. Alderman from the eighth. Thank you, Mr. President. That was, I uh, was going to join in there. Um, I, the Alderwoman from the first continually reminds us that we uh, are the board of Alder women, um, exactly. and we have a majority here on the board. So um, happy, <laughs> happy Women's History Month uh, to all of all of the women who are involved in making the Board of Aldermen what we are, our staff, um, all of us as members, um, everyone who supports us. Thank you. All the ones from the fourth. And then, then I think, then, then all the ones from, oh, hold on a second, all the ones from fourth. All the ones from 14th, did you put your hand back up? All right, all right, back to you. All right, you're muted. Can't hear. Uh, you're muted. Are my you muted? my honored guest today is Kathy Birch, and I would like to again recognize all the older women uh, for National International Women's Month. Um, they do so much, and as the alderman older woman from the 27th said, you know we usually work behind the scenes. We're not the ones out there busting our buttons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and having having been oh, uh, <laughs> married for oh, 45 years, um, you know, I, I know how to work behind the scenes as well as work in front. But, uh, you know, it's it's wonderful to be acknowledged. And I think that every woman on the board of aldermen delivers a special gift to this body. And I want to thank mm -hmm. them. And uh, as we continue to work together. Thank you so right. much. All right. All the ones from the fourth. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and all of the uh, alder people. Alder. You people did it. That was board. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> want to acknowledge uh, Laura Hughes. She's a developer in my ward that's doing fantastic things for the fourth ward. Uh, Julia Allen. Carolyn Moore, and all of the fantastic women of the Fourth Ward. I would like to honor you as my guests. All right, let's welcome all the women. All the women from the 19th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I want to honor all women for all the generations that they have moved us forward for equality, and most especially just simple recognition. For many of you who are very young and may not have read some of the history that I've read and or experienced it, you know, we know about those big achievements, the voting rights and some other things. But what you didn't know about is some of the smaller achievements that made you feel uh, more worthy in what you were trying to achieve. You see, in my first job in corporate America, we weren't allowed to wear pants to work. We couldn't wear pants suits. You had to have a dress or a skirt on. And my immediate supervisor kept a tape measure in her drawer to measure the length of your skirt. Weird. Okay. Oops. And I'm talking about a big major corporation. Okay. So just all those challenges that we have had to overcome over the years, the patent on your butt unnecessarily so, 
the privilege that a man thinks that he has to kiss you on your cheek or lips just because you don't count. So we have come a long way and there's still a lot to be achieved. But I think all those women whose shoulders we stand on and have the doors open that are open currently for us. And I asked that all of us take the opportunity to take the younger ones and guide them. Because everything is not about a twerk or a tweet. There's so much more important things to be done on this earth. And I just pray that we can get there and we get there united and be very successful. So I thank everybody for being my guest today for all the generations. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you for taking us back in history to tell to be able to show what it was like. And so thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further introductions? Any further introductions? All the men from the tent like to wrap us up. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, we're gathered here on March 4th, 2022. And this is National Tartar Sauce Day as we are all are eating fish on Friday. So enjoy your tartar sauce today. Uh, and also it is Employee Appreciation Day. So how about some appreciation for all our staff today? Thank you very much, all you guys. Yeah. In 1902, AAA was founded. So any of you folks out there on the road who need assistance of any sort, uh, thank AAA. Uh, all you folks that here uh, have any road problems, remember that. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Approval of the minutes. Approval of the minutes dated Friday, February the 25th, 2022. All the way from the 10th, you recognize on approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I move for the approval of the minutes from uh, uh, <laughs> February 25th. November 25th. I'm having the some timers say uh, this morning. That's all February right. 25th, 2022. Been second. about all of them from 10th, second about all of them from the 22nd. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Report of city officials. Report of city officials can be found in A, B, and C of the agenda and has been placed in the Alderman's mailboxes. We dispense with line item seven. Would anyone like take any bills or resolutions off of any of our informal calendars? Would anyone like take any bills or resolutions off of any of our informal calendars? We will dispense with line items eight through, actually eight through 12. Uh, Mr. Six. President. Yes. Uh, I'm so sorry. I tried to get my hand up soon enough. Um, I would like to table re uh, my resolution, which is currently on the informal calendar. It's all right. You don't, there's nothing you need to do with it. It's on. It's yeah. Just leave it okay. where it's at. It's, it's, it's good. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. You're welcome. Uh, second reading. The following board bills were reported out of Health and Human Services with the DuPass recommendation. Board Bill 84, committee sub sponsored by Alderwoman Ingracia and Alderman Gunther, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment authorizing the city by and through its Department of Health to accept COVID-19 and the Adult Vaccination Supplemental Program Services Contract Grant Award of up to $197,913 from the Missouri Department of Health and Human Services over a period of three years from February the 1st, 2021 through February, I'm sorry, through January the 31st, 2024, and enter into and fulfill the program services contract under said grant and contained an emergency clause. Board Bill 207, sponsored by Alderwoman Martin and the following Alder persons, Ingracia, Gunther, Martin, Rice, Middlebrook, and Todd. An ordinance to require food establishment as defined in Chapter 11.42.040 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis to make water and low fat milk the default beverage options offered with food establishment children's meal. The following board bills were reported out of HUDs with a due pass recommendation. Board Bill 206 comes by Alderman Oldenburg, an ordinance amending ordinance number 71345 
commonly referred to as the City of St. Louis Annual Operating Plan for fiscal year 2021-2022 by the by the addition of a new line item, Police Department Real-Time Crime Center and amended ordinance number 71393 to appropriate $2.5 million of the $5 million of the 2021 coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds appropriated to the department, to the police department for the police department overtime, the real time crime center. Four bill 208 sponsored by Alderman Bosley and Alderman Muhammad and ordinance pertaining to the creation of funds to assist in the city's efforts to support African-Americans who have been victims of the effects of slavery, authorizing the comptroller to establish the Reparation Fund and establish the Midwest Land Development Fund. The following board bills were reported out of the Streets Committee with the due pass recommendation. Board Bill 185, sponsored by Alderman Todd, Alderwoman Evans, Alderwoman Tyus, Alderwoman Boyd, Alderman Boyd, and Alderwoman Davis. An ordinance authorizing the honorary street name Samuel W. Hilton, Jr. Way, pursuant to Ordinance 68937, which shall begin at the intersection of Fountain Avenue and Albert, Aven and Albert Avenue and run east on Fountain Avenue to the intersection of Fountain Avenue and Bayer Avenue. Board Bill 192 sponsored by Alderwoman Howard pursuant to ordinance number 70333 as amended by ordinance number 71395 and ordinance directing the director of streets to install a speed hump to calm the floor traffic on the 4900 block through the 50, through the 5000 block hundred block of Lansdowne Avenue between the intersection of Lansdowne Avenue, Kings Highway Boulevard, Lansdowne Avenue, and Brandon Avenue. Board Bill 194, sponsored by Alderwoman Howard and Alderwoman Tyus, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Portion authorizing the Director of the Department of Public Safety or his designee on behalf of the City of St. Louis to enter into and execute a U.S. Department of Justice 2021 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant to accept funds awarded, appropriating said funds and authorizing the Department of Public Safety to expand the appropriate funds for allowed purposes and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 211, sponsored by Alderman Bosley, an ordinance establishing the Third Ward Residential Parking District and location and restrictions for curb parking within the Third Ward Residential Parking District and authorizing the placement of permit parking only signs and prohibiting the parking of any vehicle in the district that, that does not display the required permit and providing a and providing a penalty for violations and containing an emergency clause. The following board bill was reported out of parks committee with the due pass recommendation. Board bill 191 sponsored by Alderwoman Boyd and Alderman Todd. An ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment appropriating to the Department of Parks, Recreation and Forestry, a portion of funds originally appropriated in ordinance number 71246 to the St. Louis Development Corp for maintenance of land reutilization authority properties and containing an emergency clause. The following board bill was reported out of public safety with a due pass recommendation. Board Bill 85, sponsored by Alderwoman Howard, an ordinance repealing ordinance number 71346, which established the 14th Ward Liquor Control District. That's the extent of second reading report of standing committees. All right, thank you. All the one from the 11th. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules uh, to place board bill 207 on the perfection calendar. It's been moved by the one from 11th that we spend second. rules for purposes of moving board bill 207 from the second reading to the regular perfection calendar. Seconded by, I think it was all the one from the six. Um, yeah, seconded by all the one from six, I believe. Um, sorry, someone has the, uh, a, 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 their thing on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman from the third, you have a, a, a question about the suspension of the rules for the purposes of moving it. No, no, sir, I don't. That was for after, okay. after, um, after we finished with this business. All right. Uh, all along from the 14th, you have a question about specifically about no, I wanted to move. I wanted to, no, I wanted to move a, a bill to the perfection consent also. Uh, uh, from, this is going to the 
regular perfection calendar, are you going to suspend the rules for a bill? Yes. Yes. Uh, which one? Do we need to finish with Alderman Martin's, Alderwoman uh, well, Martin's? Look, if there are other bills that, that uh, people okay. want to add, okay. we can. All right. Let me let me give you mine here. Um, board Bill 192 and Board Bill 85. And I would like to move Board Bill 208 up. All the way from the 19th. I'm trying to find mine. I see 177, but I know I have two more. All right. Um, we'll be back next week, everybody. <laughs> but are you uh, we'll still have time yeah yeah you you yes okay well I'll, I'll just go with uh just the one today uh okay all right uh all along from the 11th would you like to amend your motion to add board bills 192 85 and 208 uh, okay, I'd like to make a motion uh, to move. I'm sorry, it's mine's uh, 207. 207, 192. 192. 85. 85. And 208. And 208 to the perfection. Um, just clarification, I want to move mine to perfection, not perfection consent, because I have an amendment. So. That's, that's all right. You can, move, you, can, you can move. Why don't you move them all to perfection consent, and then we'll just move it from perfection consent to the regular perfection calendar. So make the motion to move them to perfection consent. I'd like to make a motion to move the aforementioned bills uh, to the perfection calendar, please. Move by the other one from 11th and entertain a second on that motion. Second. 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 All the one from the 14th. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Sias. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Hi. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderwoman Evans. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Alderwoman Ingracia. Aye. Alderman Coder. Aye. Alderwoman Rice. Aye. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderman Balmer. Aye. Alderwoman Martin. Aye. Alderman Stevens. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Green. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Alderman Todd. Aye. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bacoro. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderman Cone. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Alderwoman Sias. 27 I votes. I vote, stay in the motion of all one from Lovett and move the aforementioned bills to the perfection consent calendar. All one from Lovett, would you like to request that board bill 207 be moved to the regular perfection calendar? Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to make a motion that board bill 207 oh, just is- request. Just a request. A, a request that uh, board bill 207 <laughs> is moved to the perfection calendar. All right, Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Place Board Bill 207 at the end of the regular perfection calendars and Board Bill 192, 85, and 208 at the end of the perfection consent calendar. So noted. We dispense with line item 14, perfection consent. Board Bill 144, sponsored by Alderman Coder. An ordinance approving, approving a redevelopment plan dated November 16th, 2021 for 744 through 750 South 4th Street area. Board Bill 152 sponsored by Alderman Muhammad. An ordinance approving a redevelopment plan dated December 14th, 2021 for the West Florissant Avenue, DeSoto Avenue, East Warney Avenue area. 
Board Bill 188, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis, and ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission on February the 9th, 2022, to change the zoning of property as zoning of property as indicated on district map from the K unrestricted district to the H area commercial district and city block 2196 so as to include the described portions of land in city block 2196 and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 189 sponsored by Alderman Stevens and ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission on February the 9th, 2022 to change the zoning of property as indicated on district map from the A single family dwelling district to F neighborhood commercial district and city block 2696, so as to include the described parcel of land in city block 26, I'm sorry, 4696 and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 190 sponsored by Alderman Gunther and ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission on February the 9th, 2022 to change the zoning of property as indicated on district map from the J industrial district to F neighborhood commercial district in city block 1556, so as to include the described parcel of land in city block 1556 and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 196 sponsored by Alderwoman Peel and ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission on February the 9th, 2022 to change the zoning of property as indicated on district map from the K unrestricted district to the H area commercial district in city block 39. 18.03, so as to include the described parcels of the land in city block 3918.03 and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 183, committee sub sponsored by Alderman Bosley and Alderman Stevens, an ordinance relating to the appointment of and salaries of certain employees of the department, I'm sorry, of St. Louis Board of Election Commissioners, pursuant to or pursuant to ordinance, set, I'm sorry, pursuant to 115045 and 115049 revised sections of Missouri, allocating certain other employees to a grade with rate, including an emergency clause. The provisions of this section contained in this ordinance shall be effective with the sort of the first pay period following approval by the mayor. Board Bill 180 sponsored by Alderwoman Davis and ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate above surface surface and subsurface rights for vehicle equestrian and pedestrian travel in the remaining 702.06 feet of the 20 foot wide east west alley in city block 3928, beginning 280 feet east of Vander Vander and containing and continuing eastward to its terminus, same being bounded by West Pine, Spring, Laclede, and Vander Vander in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, as hereinafter described in accordance with charter authority and in conformity with section 14 of Article 21 of the charter and imposing certain conditions on such vacation. Board Bill 187, sponsored by Alderman Cohn, an ordinance recommended by the Airport Commission and the Board of Estimate and Apportionment pertaining to the process through which the City of St. Louis Airport Authority lets concessions contract at St. Louis Lambert International Airport contain a severability clause and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 199, sponsored by Alderman Calder, an ordinance amending ordinance number 67402, which ordinance relates to original lease agreement dated March 18, 2007, to be extended in the second mutual option between the City of St. Louis, Missouri, and Consolidated Grain and Borage Company of Missouri Corporation, containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 204, sponsored by Alderwoman Middlebrook, an ordinance amending ordinance number 67299 which ordinance relates to an original lease agreement dated February the 9th, 2007, to be extended in the second mutual option between the City of St. Louis, Missouri and Avarisi Constructions, Inc., a Missouri corporation authorizing the execution of a First Amendment to lease agreement between the City of St. between the City and the leasee under certain terms and conditions for a period of five years with one more five-year mutual option of land and mooring rights or $115,020.01 for the first year and increasing each year thereafter as set forth in said First Amendment as attached here to as Exhibit A and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 205 sponsored by Alderwoman Middlebrook and ordinance amending ordinance number 71387, which ordinance relates to an original lease agreement dated December 1st, 2021 between the City of St. Louis, Missouri 
and Grossman Century Company, formerly known as Grossman Iron and Steel Company, a Missouri corporation, consenting to the assignment of said lease agreement to Advantage Metals Recycling, LLC, a Delaware Limited Liability Company, and containing the severability clause. Board Bill 193, sponsored by Alderwoman Clark Hubbard and the following Alder persons. Tyus, Davis, Howard, Spencer, P. Boyd, Bosley, Muhammad, Oldenburg, Page, and Schweitzer. An ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment authorizing the fire chief on behalf of the city of St. Louis to enter into and execute an assistance to firefighters grant with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security appropriating said funds and a required city and a required city match for this for said funds, authorizing the fire chief to expend and appropriate funds by entering into contracts or, or otherwise for grant purposes and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 195, sponsored by Alderman Bosley and the following Alder persons. Narayan, Gunther, Davis, Howard, Spencer, P. Boyd, Muhammad, Oldenburg, Bukwaro, Clark Hubbard, Page, and Schweitzer. An ordinance authorizing the Director of the Department of Public Safety or the police commissioner to enter into and execute and administer on behalf of the city agreements in substantially the form attached as Exhibit A hereto regarding reimbursement of city for the cost of training for law enforcement positions with the city or who leave their city law enforcement positions for a short period of time and contain the severability clause and an emergency clause. Board Bill 198 sponsored by Alderwoman Morton, Alderman Page, and Alderwoman Schweitzer. An ordinance to make it unlawful for an individual to operate an all-train vehicle as defined herein on public right-of-way or public property in the city. Board Bill 201 sponsored by Alderman Bukoro, Alderman Muhammad, Alderman Page, and Alderwoman Howard. An ordinance amending section one of ordinance 57831 pertaining to vehicle exhaust systems to specifically prohibit Prohibit straight pipe exhaust systems. Board Bill 209 sponsored by Alderman Coder. I'm sorry, Alderman Bacoro. An ordinance except in phase four, provider relief funding and authorizing the fire commissioner on behalf of the city of St. Louis to enter into a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and to contract to expand such funds and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 210, sponsored by Alderman Bacoro, an ordinance authorizing the fire commissioner on behalf of the city of St. Louis to enter into a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to contract to expand such funds and contain an emergency clause. Board Bill 192. Just a second. It's on page 10. Thank you. Okay. Board Bill 192, sponsored by Alderwoman Howard, pursuant to ordinance number 70333, as amended by ordinance number 71395, an ordinance directing the director of streets to install a speed hump to calm the flow of traffic on the 4900 block through 5000 block of Lansdowne Avenue between the intersection of Lansdowne Avenue and Kings Highway Boulevard and Lansdowne Avenue and Brandon Avenue. Board Bill 85. On page 12. Thank you. Board Bill 85 is sponsored by Alderwoman Howard. An ordinance repealing ordinance number 71346, which established the 14th Ward Lick Control District. Board Bill 208. On page 9. Sponsored by Alderman Bosley and Alderman Muhammad. An ordinance pertaining to the creation of funds to assist in the city's effort to support African Americans who have been victims of the effects of slavery, authorizing the comptroller to establish the reparation fund and establish the Midwest Land Development Fund. That is the extent of perfection consent. All right, Alderman from the 10th, you recognize on the motion for the perfection consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I move that we adopt the perfection consent calendar. Move on from 10th. Uh, 
Uh, you guys have been real fast today. Almost. Second. Second about all the one from the 14th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Four bills for perfection. Board Bill 181, sponsored by Alderman Odenberg and the following Alder persons. J. Boyd, Davis, Bacoro, Coder, P. Boyd, Muhammad, Odenberg, Middlebrook, Clark Hubbard, Balmer, and Schweitzer. An ordinance submitting to the voters of the city of St. Louis a proposal to change Article 4, Section 14, I'm sorry, Section 24 of the city's charter in order to increase the maximum fine that be assessed for violations of ordinances regarding the preservation and protection of environmental conditions in the city of St. Louis for the prevention of harm to the health, safety, and comfort of city residents or harm to private or public property, such as unauthorized dumping of waste or debris on private or public property, prohibited refuse, waste, tire disposal, and the like, and the like from $500 to $1,000 and prohibiting for an election to be, I'm sorry, and providing for an election to be held for voting on the proposed charter change and the manner of voting here at and the publication, certification, deposit, and recording of this ordinance and contained an emergency clause. Alderman from the 16th, you recognize on the perfection of board bill 181. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I moved for the perfection of board bill 181. Moved by the Alderman from the 16th. Second. Seconded by the Alderman from the 19th. Alderman from the 16th, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, Board Bill 181, as the clerk read, uh, does seek for a charter change, uh, take uh, raising the maximum fine for illegal dumping and ordinances and other ordinances pertaining to environmental protection uh, and the unauthorized dumping of debris, waste, and other prohibited material. Uh, from $500 to $1,000. We'll be asking the voters to approve this in August election. Um, very quickly, the reasoning for this board bill, uh, I think we all know the huge and or prolific problem that exists throughout our city around illegal dumping uh, of, of not only just trash, but uh, a lot in a lot of cases, uh, hazardous material, tires, antifreeze, oil, uh, literally folks using our city as, as a, a environmental waste dumpster. Uh, unacceptable. Uh, there's been wide reports over the media on this, but just looking at our own data, there's been approximately 1,800 calls for service. It's five calls per day in 2021. Um, the Environmental Investigation Unit is keeping up with this bad behavior, but they need a few more tools. There was a... Um, it was a public safety meeting on 19, the 19th of January, whereby using uh, the environmental investigation report uh, from 2021 uh, that's in your Google drives as context, um, there were a couple of asks at the end of that report, which basically said, hey, we would love uh, as a deterrent to uh, increase fines around illegal dumping, and we'd love more advanced cameras. Public Safety Committee um, uh, took that took those charges to, to try to marshal through um, achieving of those goals. And uh, if you recall, last week we perfected Board Bill 181, which was a capital improvements. There was a line item in there to buy uh, 100 new cameras for the Trash Task Force, or excuse me, the Environmental Investigation Unit. Um, so that's one promise we're hoping to deliver to, to the Police Department and the EIU. And the second, uh, based on their ask, would be they would welcome an increase of fines. Uh, last year alone, uh, EIU issued 573 summons with a total of 650 charges, uh, which included close to around the max charge of $500 is all, uh, and also issued over 4,000 hours of community service. Uh, this is, uh, you know, in speaking with the city councilor's office, uh, Mr. Rich Sakura. He said that uh, they do receive a fair amount of repeat offenders and they hate, they hate the community service. It seems they'd rather just pay the fine. Um, so I think the thought be, let's increase the fine so that we're not only continuing to issue community service, but let's let them also hate to pay the fine. 
Um, that annual report is worth a read. I would encourage everyone to take a look at it. Uh, but again, the takeaways were, let's increase the fines associated with illegal dumping, uh, and let's get some more advanced cameras. There are around 220-ish cameras right now that the Environmental Investigation Unit has uh, throughout the city. I think 80%, close to that 78 or 79% of those are in police district, hang on, police district six and five. So if you're not familiar with those districts, it's sort of north and northwest part of um, uh, the city. So putting cameras, of course, where, where the, uh, the dumping and the offenders are, are um, uh, you know, utilizing the alleyways the most for that, uh, you know, illegal behavior. So in concert with the cameras, which are, which are, you know, really helping the city council's office, I think the cameras are, are the reason that 80% of the charges are able to get, um, able to get filed. Uh, knowing that we can give them 100 more state-of-the-art cameras so they can put cameras at both ends of the alleys and also that are federated with the Real-Time Crime Center. Currently, those 225 cameras are not. Uh, it can not only catch these offenders in real time, but it can also monitor, again, in real time, uh, other illegal or nefarious activity that might be taking place in our city's alleyways. Uh, Mr. President, I will stop there for any questions. All right. Alderman from the 24th, you had your hand up first. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I am absolutely in support of this. I wanna thank the Alderman from the 16th. Uh, the only uh, even potential issue that I have with this is that I wish that we could make the fine uh, higher still, um, but but I, I definitely appreciate all the work here. Um, I hope that this sends the, the message to people that the city of St. Louis isn't your dump. Um, and uh, please add my name as a co-sponsor. Thank you. Mount Clark, please make note of that. Add Alderman from the 24th name as a co-sponsor to Board Bill 181. Alderwoman and Mount Clark, by the way, add my name to it also. It, it should have been there. Yeah. What happened there. But um, I believe the Alderwoman from 26th and the Alderwoman from the 4th. Thank you, Mr. President and um, members of the board. I'm already a, a proud co-sponsor of this legislation. Um, my colleague, Alderman Odenberg, noted the cause of service in his um, presentation. But just since we've been on the meeting, I've received myself three more calls and three more sets of pictures. So like I said in the hearing, Alderman Odenberg, I have plenty of pictures when we start campaigning this. And let me just speak on that on this part a little bit, because I've been out with some of the brothers that um, have to do that community service. Um, when they get caught with this. A lot of times there's a miss in, in who's being fined and who's being punished for this because they're just trying to work. A lot of them are just trying to look for work and have work cleaned out or doing what they're doing. The contractors then either don't pay them enough or don't pay them at pretty much at all. And so instead of them trying to not make any money off the job, then they're forced to do things like this. This is not negating it or condoning it. But I'm saying that a higher fine and making sure that we find and punish the right people in this is going to make a difference as well. And speaking of that, in the city of St. Louis, our amazing refuse department in the city of St. Louis, when you are a city resident, you get 12 free dumps a year. And it's like it doesn't have to be once a mm -hmm. month. It can be 12 in one time. So you all that are using, again, like Ottoman Ryan, using our city as a dump. I am so glad that we're going to have this tool now in the toolbox to make real change in this so that we all here as a board don't have to get, I know I'm not, I know we get these calls daily and these pictures daily and all that. And it's not fair because we have residents that, and a lot of our elderly residents that are out picking up, cleaning up their alleys, picking up trash every day for you all that come and think you can just dump. So thank you, Alderman Oliver, for this legislation. And again, it, for you all that, that really want to be right about that, there is an option, you know, the, and and after those 12 free dumps, you can't pay, you can still dump, but, and, but you can do it right. So um, mm -hmm. again, I'm, a, I'm already a proud sponsor of this legislation. Thank you, Alderman Oderberg, and I'll be ready for the camp. I'll be ready for campaign time for this. <laughs> All right, all the women from the fourth, you were next. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd also like to have my name added to this bill because <laughs> I know firsthand the problems of them dumping illegally and the 
it should, the fine should be increased. So that's what I want to do. Have my name added to board bill 181. All right, thank you. All the woman, all the woman from the 27th. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'm already on there, but I guess I'm going all the way back because I had created the tire bill because we had saw the, the tragedy that was going on in our communities. And when uh, Randy Brightfield had gave us a report and told us that uh, he had went through the 27th ward and got a tractor trailer filled up with tires. So we created a tire task force to create this bill. But as Alder Woman uh, Hubbard said, you have people that are hiring guys that are less fortunate, can't comprehend well, to have them to clean out their rental properties and then they dump the stuff on our lots. And so I'm in total support of this. I really wish we could do more because we need to hit the, the guys that's owning these rental companies and, and these trucking companies that's doing these tire shops. So uh, I'm in support of this. I Uh, we lost y'all. They need to force that uh, community service piece. Okay. I, I really do. That needs to be forced because when you when they tell me that they rather pay than do community service, that's sure they're not respecting our communities. And so mm. I, I just have a problem with that. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All the one from the 11th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I echo my colleagues. Um, this, along with the speeding I talk about all the time, is uh, plaguing my ward. I think being anytime you're on a, an award that borders the county, I think that folks think they can just come in, dump you know all their materials or whatever. I also have the landlord problem as well. Um, so I would like my name to be added as a co-sponsor as well. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clark, please make note of that. Um, Older woman from the 17th. Uh, actually, the Thank you. Alderman, hold on a second. All the woman yeah. from the 17th. Um, don't know how you two got shifted around, but the alderman from the 12th, I think, was first, and then you, then you were next. But uh, alderman from 12th, would you like to hold and allow the alderman from the census article? Thank you. Alderman from the 17th, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. Uh, will the alderman from the 16th yield the question? Alderman from the 16th, we yield the question to the alderman from the 17th. Well, all right. Uh, thank you, alderman uh, from the 16th. Uh, I appreciate this bill. I would like to be a co-sponsor of this bill. Uh, my question for you is, how did you arrive at uh, the increase and how much to increase that particular fine? Yeah. Yeah, good question. Um, it's what uh, there's a prohibition to go above a thousand dollars from state law. So our charter, our charter has a maximum fine for all ordinance violations, uh, not to exceed five hundred dollars. Um, and uh, there's, I, I, I would be remiss without saying there have been about seven or eight attempts in the past since 1995, at least recent history, to increase all of the municipal ordinance violation fines from five hundred to a thousand. And they've all not passed um, through the charter, through a charter amendment uh, or a charter change. And I think, I think that the reasoning behind that is because that included all local municipal, uh, you know, violations, uh, particularly building codes. And I think voters thought, hey, if my grass is too long for a couple of weeks, or I got a shingle missing off my roof, I'm going to get a thousand dollar fine. Um, so the innovation here, the difference with this, with this board bill would be we're asking voters just to concentrate on the violation around environmental protection and the illegal dumping of waste, hazardous material, debris, trash, et cetera. Other one from the 17th. It looks like her screen is frozen. Alderman from the 12th. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would just like to say, I don't think a thousand is enough. I understand the limitation there. 
Um, but I understand that we're working within uh, state law. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to uh, move that we make this board bill uh, in bank. It's been moved by the alderman from the 12th Second. and uh, seconded, I think, by the alderman from the 4th that we make. 24th. Uh, 24th. All right, perfect. Thank you. Uh, that we make board bill 181 in bank. Is there any discussion about that? It's been moved and seconded that we in bank board bill 181. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. If at the by the end of the meeting or whatever, if you if your video hung up or whatever, and you did not want to be uh, have your name added to this board bill, please just notify the clerk and, and they'll make the adjustment. All the one from the fourteenth. Um, will the alderman, uh, Mr. President, will the alderman from the sixteenth yield for questions? Alderman from the sixth, will yield for questions to all the one from the fourteenth? Yes. All along from the 14th, please proceed. Alderman Oldenburg, this bill looks like it's very well researched and, and you've you know dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. I have a question regarding, um, maybe you came upon this in your research. How does the illegal dumping affect the recycling um, in the city? Because that seems to be a big problem with some residents that you know the recycling is not happening. Have you, did you find anything out about that in your research? Yeah, you know, I think, I think it's bad actors are going to just, you know, um, uh, dump trash in, and I, I, I would, I would hope that um, if, if once recycling gets restored, or we know that the, the alley uh, recycling bins uh, are going to the recycling center again, uh, the hope would be that will maybe curb a little bit more of illegal dumping, maybe the, that that's logical. Uh, but I didn't see any direct, you know, kind of link between illegal dumping and a and a lack of opportunity to recycle. Just to answer. Oh no, I, I meant does it? In other words, I guess my question should have been phrased differently. Um, does it affect the quality of the recycling product? Ah, uh, yeah, the yeah. Dump dump. I, yeah, I I know I know for a fact the answer to that is yes. If 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 uh, hazardous material or you know uh, waste or debris. Uh, you know, that's defined different from solid waste, um, you, what you would typically think is trash gets in the recycling bins. Yes, ma'am, that that is, that does impact because that all has to be cleaned um, and sorted. So yeah, it's it's an environmental concern from that perspective too. Good point. I'm sorry, I missed oh, Well, that's okay. I probably should have phrased it better, but thank you so much. And I'm, I'm also in, very much in favor of this bill. Thank you for taking it forward. Thank you. All the one from the second, you had your hand up, but then it's down now. I don't know if you still. Um, no, I have nothing. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, fifth is gone. Eighteenth. A bunch of people probably just wanted to add their name because their hands are down. That's my assumption. If something else happened. Put your hand back up. All the one from the eighth. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, would the alderman from the 16th yield for us some questions? Alderman from the 16th, will you yield a question to the alderman? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. From the 8th, please proceed. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Alderman, um, for this. I think uh, it's it's clearly a very big issue around the city. Um, I'm just curious to clarify a couple of things. Um, what what department does the fine go to? So the the thousand dollars, where does that money end up back into? What pot? Yeah, it actually shows up in the in the um, courts uh, line items in the budget is what it would be. Okay, and so we're then would we be allocating that? So how does that money get back to environmental investigations or to the refuse department? How how do we make that happen? Yeah, I, I think it it becomes part of it. It's a revenue uh, um, line item for the for the courts, which they use uh, in return to give out rewards. So over eight thousand dollars were given out uh, last year and the year before for people to report illegal dumping. Right. So a lot of that is used in in concert with re with um, um, rewards. And then additionally, I think if any any uh, outside resources are needed for the investigation, uh, the city council's office they would use that revenue. Okay, so this this fine increase isn't necessarily going 
back into the to the more cameras. That's that was the separate bill that you were talking about. So th- okay, so this sort of cycles back through. Um, and you, that go ahead. I was just going to say that d- to remind maybe you and everybody else that the the trash task force or the EIU is funded through what was the three dollar trash uh, increase that we okay. did back in 2017. Now we pay fourteen dollars, which was a three dollar increase, and that breaks down to. Um, I think a portion of that was 350,000 of that uh, goes to pay for staffing over time and uh, police assignment bodies. And then 150,000 was uh, for cameras uh, specifically. So they can purchase about 10 or 12 cameras with that 150,000 a year. But we gave it a shot in the arm with board bill 181 uh, to buy a hundred over the next year and a half that are you know more technologically advanced. Okay, all right. So. Um... That that is helpful um, clarification, and I was curious also um, in the in the comments from the alderman from the twenty sixth um, and others about making sure that we're really finding the correct party mm-hmm. here, the responsible party. That it's not just the the workers who are out there, but the the contractors or the the owner of the property that brought in people to clean out an apartment. That um, and so I'm hoping you know specifically if this money is going back into the to the municipal court fund that it can help bolster their investigation efforts and and perhaps um i guess encourage them to to make sure that they're digging the furthest so that we're not just finding the people that are are the ones that were hired to move this stuff but the the people responsible for that um and also i just yeah and I, my my question about the funding also was i i think the more we can publicize that the refuse department can publicize um those uh, the 12 yearly allowances to the dump, um, like the alderman from the 26 said, the more we can talk about that and be very clear that how easy it is to just, you know, you don't, you can be a tenant, you don't have to own property, you just right. have to be a resident of the city. So anything that you have that shows your address in the city of St. Louis, you drive up to the dump, you can, you can take 12 loads. Um, it's, it's clear, it's just sometimes hard to find on the, on the city website. So um, maybe just an encouragement um, for us all to, and, and maybe through the, um, through this campaign to raise this fine, we can use it as a, a public engagement outreach to just really clarify what resources are available um, for, you know, it's it's spring cleaning time, right? Take right. your take your load to the dump and don't put it in the alley. So, all right, thank you so much, Alderman. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the 16th, we recognize the close on Ford Bill 181. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. In closing, I think I will address um, uh, what were some of the the comments or questions around, let's make sure we're holding the ultimate party responsible, the employers, um, as opposed to the employees. Uh, I did ask that direct question to the city council's office and they, and you guys might have to help me here with uh, some of the lawyers on the board here, but the, the doctrine of respondent superior apparently allow, has allowed them to go directly to employers and or landlords um, and hold them responsible. Uh, so uh, Rich Sikor and his team do a very good job of trying to parse through that. Um, I think initially they find everybody, of course, but then they, they work to where um, the, the ultimate employer or landlord is, is held responsible. Because uh, that was a concern, uh, I think, of, of of myself and some of the members of the committee as well. Uh, so that is being done, and we should make sure that you know, in in the annual report that comes to the public safety, that we get that breakdown. Let's see the difference in that composition. Uh, I think that's important information for us. You know, I, I will close here um, and renew my motion with saying that I agree that it's not uh, probably high enough uh, that we are uh, prohibited by state law to go above a thousand dollars. I did look at some analog cities. Uh, to St. Louis, Cincinnati charges anywhere from $1,250 to $25,000, depending on the dump. The city of Milwaukee successfully has a $5,000 maximum uh, fine for illegal dumping. And uh, just down Interstate 70 here, our friends in Kansas City have already uh, uh, increased um, to $1,000, which is right at the, the state limit. So we need to ask the voters to, to come in line with uh, some of our other cities around this problem. And you know, um, I think it's it's also incumbent upon us as we're having neighborhood meetings and whatnot to push to a vote yes, which I think will be Prop F um, uh, on the ballot in August. I know we have to get through an April election, but then let's let's make sure that that we're plugging this where and where we can, and that it's isolated solely to illegal dumping. I think is an important matter to take away here today, Mr. President. I renew my motion. 
All right, thanks. It's been moved by the alderman from the 16th, seconded by the alderman from the 19th that we perfect for Bill 181. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. For Bill 207, sponsored by Alderwoman Martin, Alderwoman Ingracia, Alderman Gunther, Alderwoman Rice, Alderwoman Middlebrook, and Alderman Todd. An ordinance to require food establishment as defined in Chapter 11.42.040 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis to make water and low fed milk the default beverage options or offered with food establishment children's meal. All of them from the 11th, you recognize on the perfection of Board Bill 207. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would uh, like to uh, first offer um, two amendments. Um, oh, no, starting with no, it, uh, Do I need to make a motion? Yeah, you got a mo motion. So to I'd like perfect. a motion to perfect. You think I'd have this down by now? I'd like to make a mo motion to perfect Board Bill 207. Thank you. The move by the alderman from the 11th, seconded by the alderman from the 9th. Now you have some amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like um, to uh, put forth amendment number one to board bill 207. All right, is it, um, do you have it written out and it is it in, a, in the drive? It should, be in, it should be in the drive, thank you. Um, and uh, okay. it's basically, um, I worked with the uh, Missouri Restaurant Association and the Beverage Association um, to add 100% um, fruit juice containing no more than six ounces per container or serving. Right. But, uh, would you like to make the motion to adopt? I'd like to make a motion to adopt amendment number one to board bill number 207. Second. 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 From the 11th and uh, entertain the second. 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 Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, make note of that. Amendment number one has been adopted. All the women from the 11th, we're back to you. I, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to adopt amendment number two to board bill uh, 207, also in the drive, and it is just a technical error. All right. Okay. Fix it. Hold on for a second. Uh, all the women from the 11th, please state the contents of amendment number two. This is uh, to amend uh, Board Bill 207, page three, line 10, as follows. Beginning on page three, line 10, after the words set forth in, strike out the words and figures um, and add division B and insert in lieu thereof, section two. All right, it's been moved by the all one from the 11th. Entertain a second on that motion. Second. Second by the all one from the 14th. Any discussion about four? on amendment number two to board bill 207. Alderman from the, tw and popped up and went down. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt amendment number two for board bill 207. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. We've adopted amendment number two to board bill 207. Uh, all the women from the left. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I uh, am excited to uh, bring this bill forth. I, um, you know, I think everyone comes to this board um, with uh, their life experience, and a lot of us for, um, bring that experience uh, as mothers, uh, grandmothers, fathers, grandfathers, um, or have children they care about. Um, this bill is supported by the uh, St. Louis Children's Hospital, American Heart Association. Cancer Action Network and American Diabetes Association, among others. Um, just to kind of read a, or just to read a staggering uh, statistic, nearly two thirds of youth living in the U.S. consume a sugary drink daily. That equates to over 30 gallons of sugary drinks every year. Without change, 40% of children will develop type two diabetes, which makes you two times more likely to develop and die from cardiovascular disease. Uh, I think um, we've all seen the effects of COVID on uh, children and adults with diabetes. So I think that this is a good time to propose this legislation. Um, I know I am uh, 
not a perfect mom and my kid uh, drinks sugary drinks a lot. Um, but I do think it's important for parents to um, stop and pause uh, when we're on the go, when we're in a hurry um, and think about what um, our children are consuming. Uh, this is by no way a uh, mandate. You can still order your uh, children whatever you want um, and the restaurant is not required to uh, upcharge. Um, we have also worked with the Department of Health on this bill as well to make sure it's something that uh, they can uh, easily adopt. Um, and I think this is just an opportunity for us to uh, just weigh in and improve the public health of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderman from the 22nd. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board with the Alderman from the 11th yield for question. Alderman from the 11th, we yield question to Alderman from the 22nd. Yes. Alderman from the 22nd, please proceed. Sure. Alderman, um, how will we police this? Who would write the tickets if they're in violation? So the restaurant would have um, six months to change their menu. And this is only just how those kids, we're all pretty familiar with how these kids meals um, are presented on the menus. And so um, it's just an additional box that the health inspector checks along with many other things that they check. So if they haven't changed that, um, then uh, that would be a, war a warning. Okay. Um... So they, so when they, when the health department goes in and do an inspection, and if they don't see the product there, then they may give them a warning, and next time they may um, give them a fine. Well, only if it still says, you know, uh, cheeseburger with fries and your choice of soda or your cho choice of, you know, chocolate milk. Um, but they don't have to offer. This is this is they don't have to offer um, a drink. It's just. Um, uh, prohibiting the grouping together of these items as a package. Oh, okay. Um, cause what bubbled up for me is, um, people constantly call me about expirate, uh, expired food, canned goods, whatever in stores. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not sure if it's the health department that, you know, investigates that or the license collector's office or how do we manage that? I know it's not totally germane, but I don't know if you might have had some discussion. Yeah, no, um, that's a good question because actually I have had that, uh, I've had that brought to me before and um, I did call the um, health department on that and um, they they followed up. But uh, but yes, uh, this would just, you know, be another check on the inspection list. And um, if, uh, if it's offered, then, you know, obviously um, we, we want to give folks warnings so they would have the opportunity to say, Hey, you can no longer offer this. Um, but again, this is not prohibiting um, a parent from making a choice from any beverage offered by that restaurant. This is just a way of, um, you know, uh, raising awareness. And, you know, as a parent, when you pull up, if you want to, you can say, Hey, your choices are milk water or this apple juice product. And I did, uh, it was verified to me by the beverage association that, uh, the, uh, the juice is now offered in these sizes. So this is, um, still something that, um, you know, distributors are offering and it, it's not, it shouldn't be cumbersome. Okay. I know your effective date is six months, um, uh, versus, you know, normally 30 days after the mayor signs a bill. Is there a marketing campaign that's going to happen between that period of time? Cause I can certainly appreciate that extended period of time to give folks a chance to know about it, but how will they be notified about this change? Um, that is a good question um, that I wish I had uh, thought of, um, but uh, I don't know if, um, I don't know how that information is distributed, um, but uh, I don't know. We have uh, a colleague that might know how those changes are um, are shared with uh, with restaurants, but I am not sure. Okay, no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman from the 23rd. Yeah, just uh, one I'd want to roll call because I, I don't support this. Um, my issue again is what, what else are we going to tell businesses they cannot do? You know, we, we drive businesses out of the city. 
you know, we, we, we've done things, you know, uh, I, I would just want to roll call. I can't support telling a restaurant or a business, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, even in the case of Alderman Boyd, who has a, a, like a party kind of a you know, wedding party kind of a thing, you know, what's to stop them? You know, what, what, what's on his, does he have to change his whole uh, event menu that says, yeah, I can't serve kids under, I, I just, I'm not going to. No, uh, no, he wouldn't. And you're still able uh, to. I'm just making a statement. I'm just making a statement. I'm just making a statement. I would just ask for a roll call. I just don't. All the from the 23rd. Hold for a second. Hold for a second. All from 11. You haven't been recognized. So I. So I was just making a statement. Yeah. And all the from 23rd. Your comments come to me. If you want her to yield for questions. I don't. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make a statement. I would like a roll call on this because I can't support, you know, I can't support this. All right. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Any further discussion? All the one from the 11th, you're recognized to close. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, it was confirmed that the uh, health department um, would uh, distribute information through the um, public information team and that the American Heart Association will also help make sure that those materials are distributed to the right business owners. And again, um, parents can still, you know, order whatever they want. Um, and uh, that would, a business owner can serve uh, what they want. I mean, obviously not alcohol, but, uh, but those other, other beverages. So, um, I, I appreciate um, this opportunity and with that, oh, um, I'm not sure if the alderwoman from the 27th has a question. It is too late because I've recognized okay. the close. Yeah. All right. Um, I thank everyone for that uh, opportunity and I uh, request favorable consideration. Thank you. All right. It's been moved by all alderwoman from the 11th and seconded by alderwoman from the 9th that we adopt board bill number that we perfect board bill number 207 as amended. And there's been a request for roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus. Hold on one second. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Alderwoman Evans. Alderman Page. Aye. Alderman Ingracia. Aye. Alderman Coder. Alderman Rice. Aye. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderman Balmer. Aye. Alderman Morton. Aye. Alderman Stevens. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Green. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Alderman Todd. Aye. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Boyd. Aye. aye. Muhammad said aye. Thank you. Boyd said aye. Thank you. Alderman Vacoro. No. Alderman Ryan. Aye. Alderman Cone. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderwoman Evans. Aye. Alderman Calder. Alderwoman Peel. 
Hi. Twenty-five I votes and one no vote. I vote. Stay in the motion. All the one from the left and perfected. Board Bill two hundred seven as amended. Third reading consent. Board Bill 147, 172, 173, 174, 186, 167, 177, and Board Bill 165. Alderman from the 10th, you recognize on the motion for the third reading consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. Pardon, President, members of the board. I move we adopt the third reading consent calendar. Second. Move by Alderman from the 10th, second by Alderman from the 22nd. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we adopt our third reading consent calendar. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Honorable Woman Sias. Honorable Woman Middlebrook. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderman Evans. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Alderman Gracia. Aye. Alderman Calder. Alderman Rice. Aye. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderman Balmer. Aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Stevens. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Green. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Alderman Todd. Aye. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Vaccaro. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderman Cone. Aye. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Boyd. President Reed. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderman Coder. Alderman. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Aye. 27 I votes. I have by a vote, sustain the motion. Alderman from the 10th and 3rd read and finally passed the aforementioned bills. Third reading, report of engrossments. Board bill Alderman one. The, all right, other than second. Alderman from the 16th, would you like to place board bill 184 as amended on the third reading and formal calendar? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to make that request and just uh, to ensure everyone that's really just a technicality to ensure that uh, the Board of Estimate and Apportionment approves the um, said bill and capital improvements first uh, and we'll uh, take it up hopefully next week. All right, Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Place Board Bill 184 as amended on the third reading informal calendar. So noted. Third reading report of engrossments. Board Bill 147, 172, 173, 174, 186, 167, 177, and 165. All other business being suspended, the President shall in open session fix his signature here too to the end that these may become law.
Other one from the six, you recognize? Other one from the sixth. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to suspend the rules to introduce resolution 207 from the floor today. All right, it's been moved by the other one from the six that we spent. Uh, I think it was seconded by the other one from the 20th. It was, it's a quick one. But then we suspend the rules for the purposes of introducing <laughs> resolution 207. Um, it's actually, I apologize, it's 205. 205, thank you. That was an important, this important change. Uh, it's been moved by all from six, seconded by all from 20th that we spend the rules for purposes of introducing resolution 205. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderwoman Evans. Alderman, Aye. Thank you. Alderman Page. Aye. Alderwoman Ingracia. Aye. Alderman Coder? Aye. Alderman Rice? Aye. Alderman Gunther? Aye. Alderman Balmer? Aye. Alderman Martin? Aye. Alderman Stevens? Aye. Alderman Schweitzer? Aye. Alderman Howard? Aye. Aye. Alderwoman Green. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Alderman Todd. Aye. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bacoro. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Some exemptions. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Aye. 27 aye votes. I vote. We stay in motion. All the one from the six and spend the rules for the purposes of introducing resolution 205. Now, clerk, place resolution 205 at the end of our first reading of resolutions calendar. All the one from the 14th, your hand is up. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll get to it when we when we get to it. But Madam Clerk, please make note of that. I'll note it. All right. First reading of resolutions. Resolution 197, sponsored by Alderman Bacoro and Alderman Tyus, amending Board of Aldermen rules to prohibit lobbyists from serving on the Board of Aldermen. Uh, Alderman from the 23rd, you recognize on the first reading of resolution? Yeah, I've seen this, you know, in, at the state level, and uh, what I would like to do is refer that to, I would imagine, legislation so that we can 
uh, discuss this openly and and have a good robust conversation about whether we believe we should have this or not. All right, it's been moved by Alderman from 23rd and obtained a second on that motion. Second. Second about Alderman from the 22nd. Hello. Uh, For discussion. Uh, it's not about the resolution of what committee, if you have a discussion Correct. about the committee. Yes. About the committee. Yes. Please. Um, well, I see that I see the alderman from the seventh uh, hand up, but I, I think that is if this is a rule change, it should go to the rules committee. Well, that's fine. I, I think that uh, the the alderman from twenty thirteen open up whatever committee. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. All right, uh, alderman from the seventh. Yeah, I just wanted to add. I, I mean, we just had this discussion on the alderman from the thirteenth resolution a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it's a rules change being proposed. I think it should go to the rules committee, and we'll we'll discuss it there. All right. Sounds good. Alderman, from the 23rd, I think you were open to that. You oh, sure. No, let's, let's send it to the uh, rules, and uh, hopefully we have a hearing and have a robust discussion on this. All right. It's been moved by the Alderman from the 23rd, seconded by the Alderman from the, uh, Alderman from the 22nd. That we assign res this resolution to rules. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Madam Clerk, please make note. So noted. Resolution 199, sponsored by Alderman Vaquero, requesting the collective revenue to spend collection of recycling charges. Alderman from the 23rd, you recognize on the first reading of resolution 199. Uh, so this, I get multiple, multiple complaints because we're not recycling. And people, you know, one of the issues, things that we said, we charged a little bit extra because we said that would take care of the recycling. I'm surprised sort of that someone hasn't filed suit, but in, it feels to me that we're charging for something we said we were going to do and we're not doing. And uh, so... Again, I think there should be some discussion on it, but I believe that we're collecting money for something that we're not doing. And either we should lower it or give a credit back or, or something, or I got an idea. How about we figure out a way to start doing the recycling? Again, I don't know if anybody else is getting multiple calls, but that is, I get that call all the time. People are upset that they're putting the trash in the, uh, recycling into the same, in, you know, and then going to the trash. All right. Would you, uh, Alderman from the 23rd, are you, you want to send this to committee? Yeah, I, I would like to send that. I believe that one should go to the streets committee, but, you know, okay. again, I'm open to whatever, but I believe it's true. Okay. All right. It's been moved by Alderman from the 23rd that we sign resolution 199 to streets and our second. Uh, second by Alderman from the 22nd. Any further discussion? Been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I oppose. Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please assign resolution 199 to streets. So noted. Resolution 201, sponsored by all the women ties. Public safety legal issues regarding homeless encampments and pop-up shelters. Alderman from the 22nd, recognized on the first reading of resolution 201. Yes, uh, Mr. President. I don't see myself as a co-sponsor, but I'm, I should be a co-sponsor. Please place Madam me as a co-sponsor. Madam, Clark, um, please know that. At. I would like the clerk to read Resolution Two Zero One, please. Madam Clerk, can you please read Resolution Two Zero One? Resolution Two Zero One: Public Safety Legal Issues Regarding Homeless Encampments and Pop-Up Shelters. Whereas the unhoused or homeless population issue in the city of St. Louis is an issue that deserves to be addressed from both the public safety and the health aspect with the solution that is fair and equitable solution for the entire city. For the entire city. Whereas it is the position of the sponsors of this resolution that no one deserves to be homeless or unhoused. Whereas it is the position of the sponsors that the homeless and unhoused should not have rights that are suspended superior to the house or property owners. And whereas often there are public 
safety issues associated with homeless encampments or pop-up shelters that often violate the zoning laws of the city of St. Louis. And whereas according to the 2018 statistics from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, there are over half of a million Americans that are homeless. Those same statistics show that the homeless population has a high rate of mental illness, substance abuse, and previous incarceration. Whereas therefore, unless homeless programs and housing are set up and placed in properly zoned areas, there are often external problems that plague the communities where the homeless shelters and housing are placed that require extra security and policing. Whereas the last two administrations have have also used pop up homeless shelters in location around the city that do not seem to have zoning laws that allow said use and said pop up shelters are often reported by surrounding residents as a source of criminal behavior which increases the crime in their neighborhood. And whereas using the board of adjustment and other methods such as closing Larry Wright's facility, which had been located in, near the downtown St. Louis Public Library, Library for many decades closing other facilities located in other parts of the city and moving them to neighborhoods North St. Louis has caused public issues and such as burning down, uh, such as the burning down of valuable housing stock where homeless have sought refuge and attempt to heat the vacant housing by starting illegal fires. Whereas there is some question as to the legality of homeless encampments and pop-up shelters. And whereas there have been very little additional so social services security or policing assigned to these facilities, placing facilities in improper zone areas or without proper support as stress to St. Louis neighborhoods, especially those have been those that have been for years denied city resources to maintain a healthy living environment. This solution is patently unfair. And whereas even though there are multiple documentable public safety problems at the certain homeless facilities and they have been clearly in violation of the zoning laws of the city of St. Louis, the Board of Adjustment has allowed these facilities, facilities to expand in violation of the law causing harm to surrounding residential communities. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the sponsor of this resolution are proposing the Public Safety Committee convene to investigate the legality and the public safety issues surrounding homeless encampment pop-up homeless shelters and all other homeless establishment. Introduced this fourth day of March 2022 by the Honorable Sharon Tyus, Alderwoman of the First Ward, the Honorable Jeffrey Boyd, Alderman of the 22nd Ward. Uh, Alderman from the 22nd. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to make a motion to send for um, Resolution 201 to the Public Safety Committee. It's been moved by Second. Alderman from the 22nd, seconded by the Alderman from the 14th that we send resolution 201 of public safety. Any discussion about that assignment? Uh, all the women from the 14th, your hand is still up. All the women from the 14th. All, your your right. hand is still up. Oh, I, I'm finished. Then. Okay. All right, all the women from the six. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Would the alderman from the 22nd year full questions? Is it questions related to the um, just this committee assignment? We're not here to discuss the bill, but this is just for a committee assignment. Okay, That's I'll it. wait then. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, any discussion about the committee assignment? It's been moved by the alderman from 22nd, seconded by um, the alderman for, of, the, of the 14th that we assigned resolution 201. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please assign resolution 201 to public safety. So noted. Resolution 206, I'm sorry, 202, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis, authorizing extension of the completion date in connection with the plan for industrial development project for Steel Coat Graduate LLC. All the one from the 19th, you recognize on the first reading of Resolution 202. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, resolution 202 is uh, 
a basic uh, extension of a project completion date. Uh, these are simple. This is what we do when we see a development is uh, doing well. And uh, this extension is because they added more to the project. So if, uh, if it is required, it can go to committee. I would uh, request unanimous consent. I would like to request unanimous consent. Yes, sir. Objection. If there's been an objection to unanimous, unanimous consent by the other woman from the eighth. Um, okay. So you can choose to suspend the rules and still pass it out today if the timing is an issue. The timing is definitely an issue. Uh, so I would like to request suspension of rules to uh, pass it out today. It's been moved by the alderman from Second. the 19th. Uh, seconded Second. by the alderman from, from the 21st that we suspend the rules for purposes of moving Resolution 202 out today. And uh, what's before us now is just the discussion about the suspension of rules. All the ones from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, would the alternate one from the 19th yield for a question? All the one from the 19th will yield for questioning to all the one from the 8th. Yes. Thank you, Alderwoman. Um, I, I objected just because I, I want to be clear. Uh, we've seen a lot of these resolutions come forward. And is it is it our practice that they should go to committee for, to, for a public hearing on them first? Or um, I, I, there was a question raised uh, by one of my constituents about whether we needed to have a public hearing. So that was the reason for my objection. There's substantial completion on the Steelco project. And as all of us know, just by all of the publicity it has gotten. Uh, it started off with just one apartment building being done, has expanded to a new city. Uh, and uh, based on all the planning to get everything else in order, we just need to get uh, an extension to finish this one part. And uh, most of what is down there has never asked for any kind of incentives, only the very last one that we had talked about. So we're just extending the completion date by contract, which was supposed to be completed by December, 2021, and just ask for an extension, which was also agreed upon by the appropriate departments. Okay. Um, yeah, I was, so So we don't need to have another public hearing on, on oh, this resolution? Oh, absolutely not. This is not a new project, no. Okay, I, I, that was the, the question that was raised. So I just wanted to be clear. Thank you so much for, for yielding for a question. Sure. It's been moved by the other one from 19th, seconded by the other, uh, then from the 21st that we spend the rules for the purposes of passing resolution 202 out today. Previous role. There's been a request for previous role. Well, hold on for a second. Uh, we can't do previous role because it was a voice vote. It's been, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, okay. please call the roll. Alderman Matthias. Alderman Middlebrook? Aye. Alderman Bosley? Alderman Evans? Aye. Alderman Page? Aye. Alderman Ingracia? Aye. Alderman Coder? Abstain. Alderman Rice? Aye. Alderman Gunther? Aye. Alderman Walmer? Aye. Alderman Morin? Aye. Alderman Stevens? Uh, present. Alderman Schweitzer? Aye. Alderman Howard? Aye. Alderman Green? Aye. Alderman Oldenburg? Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Alderman Todd. Alderman Aye. Aye. Thank you. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Boyd? Aye. Alderman Vacoro? Aye. Alderman Orion? Aye. 
เอาเดี๋ยวไม่เข้าเอาเดี๋ยวไม่คลอยคลับเบอร์ไอเอาดูว่าเป็นบอยคริสเตนรีดเอาดูว่าเป็นทายส์เอาดูเป็นบาสลีเอาดูเป็นคลาวสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสินสามสิบสองไม่ตัดสิน Um, move about all of them for 19 second about all of them for 20 second any discussion it's been, previous moved, row. it's been moved and second there's been a request for previous role hearing no objection motion carries thank you very much you're welcome resolution 205 sponsored by alderwoman and gracia alderwoman middlebrook alderman calder alderwoman rice Alderman Gunther, Alderman Morton, Alderman Swicer, Alderman Green, Alderman Ryan, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Oldenburg, Alderman Todd, Alderman Spencer, Alderman Clark Hubbard, Alderman Boyd, and Alderman Howard, in support of the expiration of the City of St. Louis mass mandate. Alderman from the six, you recognize on the first reading of Resolution 205. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I move for unanimous consent. Hearing no objection, all the one, please proceed. Um, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. This is a resolution that the health department asked for the support of the Board of Aldermen on. Um, I think most people realize that on last Friday, the CDC recommended um, some new guidance on COVID-19 and put in place community level systems. And all of the indicators here in the city of St. Louis have us falling within the low level. And so the director of health has not asked us to um, renew the mask mandate here in the city of St. Louis, um, but this language does include information about the fact that she is still encouraging individuals um, to wear masks in certain situations, um, making sure that people who are in common areas of city hall and other city offices are still wearing masks to be careful and then um, indicates that the board encourages the Department of Health to continue monitoring the metrics to ensure that we are um, able to put a mask mandate in place if the data and metrics indicate that we should. And I'm happy to take questions. All right, um, Alderman from the 12th. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, dear members of the board. I merely want to ask that uh, being a broken record today apparently, uh, I wanted to uh, move that we make this on bank as well. It's been moved by Alderman from the 12th that we make resolution 205 in bank, um, entertain a second on second. that motion. Uh, seconded by the Alderman from the 4th. Any discussion on that motion? Then moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Uh, all the one from the 19th. Yeah, you're, you're muted, all the one. Okay, that's better. Um, Mr. President, I wanted to uh, just have a very brief discussion on this. Is that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, as I... Uh, contemplated this uh, and uh, did my homework on this. First, I'd like to thank Dr. And I can never get her name right, so she's Dr. Davis to me. Uh, but our uh, the interview that she did, I watched it. I appreciate her honesty. I appreciate the fact that she uh, opened up the process for people to start thinking for themselves as well. Uh, the CDC 
uh, has uh, reasons for what they do. And even with the interview with that director, there was a lot of common sense statements made, which allowed people to, yes, you can hear what we say, but you, you should also think about you, your family, your business, and, and your community. So um, maybe we don't wear masks for a while, but if an individual or a business believes they should require it, they have the right to do that. And so I heard that in their statements and I feel comfortable in supporting this, but knowing that all that we shall do in the future will be to continue to give people the voice and the voice and the, the opportunity to think and do for themselves, because this is not going away totally anytime soon. So we do still need to be cautious. And so I can support it based on that. And uh, because I heard uh, their statements were loud and clear to still be cautious for this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion, any further discussion? All the women from the sixth, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we adopt resolution 205. Moved by the all Second. the women from the six. Seconded by the all the women from the eighth. Uh, any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries by your vote. You've adopted resolution 205. That's the extent of first reading resolutions. Second reading. We have none. Miscellaneous and unfinished business. We have none. Announcements. Tuesday, March 8th at 9 a.m., HUDS will have a meeting. Wednesday, March 9th, streets will have a meeting at 10 a.m. Personnel will have a meeting at 1 p.m. Health and Human Services will have a meet at 2 p.m. all via webinar. Thursday, March 10th, public employees will have a meet at 10 a.m. HUDs will have a meet at 1 p.m. via webinar. And Friday, March 11th, full board meeting 10 a.m. via webinar. That's the extent of the announcements. Great. Thank you. Uh, at the personnel committee, one of the things that we're going to be discussing at personnel is uh, our date for coming coming back in person. So if any of you have any thoughts or whatever and you cannot make that personnel uh, meeting, just email the clerk and we'll make sure to take into account uh, your ideas or thoughts or concerns or whatever when we do it, when we have that meeting. All along from the 19th. I forgot to take my hand down. <laughs> okay. All along from the 26th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. We're on announcements, right? Yes. Okay, I want to make sure yeah. I, um, I had a call, but I have three announcements. First, um, Heat Up St. Louis and the St. Louis City Health Department is having a Get What You Need Community Resource Fair this Saturday, uh, 11 to 2, at 4145 Kennerly Avenue. It's the Child and Family Empowerment Center. And they are going to have uh, expunge, an expungement clinic. We all know that we have constituents that can really use that. Uh, parking assistance, food, COVID vaccine boosters, utility assistance, rental assistance, and free uh, more. So if you have constituents, please share that, that you might think might be able to take advantage of that. Please share that with them. And then in the 26th Ward, well, formerly the 26th Ward, now the 10th Ward, uh, Athenia Healthcare. Shout out to Athenia Healthcare making... Women's History again by announcing Dr. Kendra Holmes as their new president. So Athenia Healthcare and Reverend Dr. Antonio Settles at Union Memorial UMC, they are having a community resource fair as well with vaccines, voter registration, um, and Medicaid application assistance. And that's from 12 to 3 at 1141 Belt, 12 to 3 at 1141 Belt. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to make an announcement. I know that uh, many of um, people that are watching or follow our, com our committee meetings as well. Yesterday in our HUD's committee meeting, uh, the man Boyd announced that we as all the persons can submit um, projects or submit things that's going on in our ward. And so uh, <clears throat> I wanted to announce that anyone that might be in the 28th ward, 
that might want to make sure that their voice is heard. I have already started reaching out to my constituents so that I can make sure that I can advocate um, on behalf of the entire formerly 26th Ward, 10th Ward at the meeting on Tuesday. But if there are any constituents in the 28th Ward, I want to make sure that you all's voice can be heard as well so you can reach out to me or my office and we will take um, all of your comments down. Thank you so much, President. All right, thank you. Alderman from the 12th. Thank you, Mr. President. I promise I'm not gonna ask for an on bank this time. <laughs> There's nothing to on bank. Uh, but I did just wanna make a brief announcement of congratulations to our very own Board of Aldermen Liaison uh, from the Mayor's Office, Kevin Bailey, who celebrated a, oh, let's say 32nd birthday yesterday. So to Kevin Bailey, at least on behalf of the 12th Ward, a warm, happy birthday. And uh, with that, I yield back. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alderman. Uh... Alderman from the 24th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think we all remember a few years back uh, the St. Patrick's Day uh, festival and parade uh, here in Dogtown was one of the, the first casualties of uh, COVID. Uh, it was one of the first major events here in town uh, to be canceled and kind of let us know that COVID was here. Uh, so I am uh, very happy that this year, Thursday, March 17th, uh, St. Patrick's Day will be in full effect uh, in Dogtown in the 24th Ward. Uh, there's a kid zone, uh, a party zone. Uh, there'll be live music, uh, the parade. Uh, the parade starts at uh, roughly Oakland and Tam and goes to uh, Manchester and Tam, starts at 11. Uh, if anyone hasn't been to a St. Patrick's Day in Dogtown before, I would uh, definitely recommend it. It's a, it's a great time. Uh, so. We're all looking forward to it and uh, everyone is welcome. All right, thank you. Um, Alderman from the 22nd. Yes, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to send a big shout out to my wife's sister, Renee Cooper, who will be celebrating a significant birthday on March the 6th. I'm trying to be careful. I really want to say what it is because it's a magical birthday, but uh, because this is, uh, Women's History Month, I'm just gonna stay out of that one. But anyway, she is celebrating a very significant birthday. I love her dearly, and uh, we're looking forward to celebrating with her this weekend. Thank you. Uh, we also have um, uh, Miss Miss Young is celebrating her hundredth birthday today. Uh, just got a, a note across my desk. Uh, and um, let's give her a big congratulations on her. Congratulations, Ms. Young. And what a perfect name. I didn't think about it. Yeah. 100 years young. <laughs> all right. Uh, all the one from the 20th, all the one from, from the 19th, you still have your hands up. And all the one from 24th, you still have your hands up. You guys have anything or are you done? Oh, I do, sir. All right, all the way from the 19th. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to wish my eldest son a happy birthday. His birthday is this Sunday. Uh, it is rare that I talk about my family on any level yeah. because I know how vicious politics is yeah. and I don't never want them to ever be touched by any of it <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but as I am uh aging with all kinds of I don't care and that's a nice way to put it I'm going to start talking about them at length so to my dearest oldest son your mom says happy birthday to you and may you please enjoy Sunday and I've sent you a surprise thank you bye Thank you. Let's happy birthday today. All the men from the 24th, you still have your hands up. You're just trying to stall us out or you, you have something for us. All the men from the 24th, going once, going twice. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so Maybe he's taking a nice Let's move let's, 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 uh, 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 likely. I think he's watching uh, The Simpsons. Motion to motion to Alderman from the 10th, you recognize on the motion to excuse. 
Alderman from the 10th. You recognize on the motion. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I move that we excuse the Alderman from the first ward for necessary absence. Move by the Alderman from 10th, entertain a second on that motion. Back in action. For the 27th. Uh, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Oh, no. man, I'm recording that one. I'm turning. <laughs> Uh, motion carries. Alderman from the tenth, you recognize on the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move that we adjourn to March the eleventh, twenty twenty-two. Second. Move by Second. Second about all one from the fourth. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Pose. We stand adjourned. You all have a great weekend. Talk have to a you great weekend. Too.